goes in there and tells her, and then the baby inside of her jumps for joy. John jumps for joy because literally, first of all, the name God is gracious. That's what the name means. And John, God's grace comes before salvation. That's literally John came before Jesus, which God's grace comes before salvation. That's literally, you can take the names and take their literal meanings and you can apply that. And then it's like, oh, it makes it so much easier. But literally the baby inside of her jumped for joy. I was like, there you go. That's really. Totes. What chapter was that? It's in Luke 1. And as far as everything else that I read to you, that was uh, Galatians chapter 5. And then, from the complete Jewish Bible, Galatians chapter 6. Because for whatever reason, looks like the King James Version ended up not including Galatians chapter 6, which is very weird. Come on, Shakespeare, what are you doing? What does the sixth one say? That's, uh, that, so Galatians chapter 6. Yep. Wait a minute, that's weird. What in the world, bro? That's so freaking weird. Okay. <laughs> Why did it jump from Galatians all the way down to Luke? Up to Luke. Galatians is further down. What in the... This is so weird, dude. <laughs> it went from... It did it on its own. <laughs> what in the... Ooh, it's weird. Okay, that's cool. That's it. Okay. I'm not surprised, I guess. I'm not. Why does it do that? That's very odd. Because they're not in the same order. Okay, maybe it's in the... Anyway. That is so weird. Even putting it in this... this Basically, Galatians chapter 6 says, uh, Brothers, suppose someone is caught doing something wrong. You who have the Spirit should set him right. But in the spirit of humility, keeping an eye on yourselves so that you won't be tempted to. Won't be tempted to. You won't also be tempted. So it's one of those that remembering that, okay, we give correction in a, in a way that allows for that person to receive that correction. And in, so we also make sure that we keep ourselves out of judging and... <coughs> And help it to only... <sighs> only to really help the person to, to stop identifying with that limiting belief, that limiting lie, that, that lie, that past. The past is a lie? Whatever. If it's not conducive to what God has to say, you know, if it's something that's not... It's one of those that the past can change, or the past, it doesn't matter, because the one that writes all of reality is what's inside of us. That's why you've got certain people that, you know, like, if no one talks about, like, oh, I remember when my baby was you know, learning and ended up, like, shitting his diaper and all that, and, I mean, you know, as a grown... Parents, like, parents do, and it's they, not... That, that person, that person does not go about every day, like, oh, I remember when I shed my they diaper. They love sharing, like, embarrassing baby photos. Yeah. And, like, Cause, talk cause, about <laughs> embarrassing stories about their children. Because it's one of those where it's, like... It's like, hey, understand that it's not a big deal, you know? Understand that it's not actually really... It, it feels embarrassing, but once you... Once you yeah, you know, it's, it's, and that's, it's not embarrassing. Yeah. Like, the parents, like... They're, they're like, oh, that's so cute. And you're like, oh, my gosh. One of the big picture. Like, yeah. Because what that does is it helps you to remember that, wait a minute, like... <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> so the reason I brought that up was was so that anytime we're talking, anytime that talking with friends or anyone, you know, anyone we anyone interacts with is doing the best to to help them to remember what is true and to You also gotta remember remember the ember. You gotta remember. remind them to ember. 
Hey, Steven, because remember to Ember, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you gonna, I remember if, you, if you don't Ember, you're going to be looking around for a whole minute. I'm just waiting for a sign. It's like, did you Ember? Did you remember to Ember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Ah, duh, there you go. Now that, yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. And if they are Ember, they'll be able to see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's taking on that new life. <laughs> Literally, Embering gives you a new life extra. The Japanese were very subtle at making the game biblical without making it feel bibl- like feel it. or yeah. 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 But that's honestly that was the kind of video game. As a child of that grew up with faith and and like feeling like what's going on like that was ah oh, this is that's how it is you know that's a good one like right. that's a good game that at you know young young me that was the game he always wanted it's like that's how you show faith that's how you that's how you help people uh, that's a good way of helping people to to remember what is true you know I mean you've been. You dominated on Dark Souls. You're good at it now. You see it. You understand it. You know, you've got your way of being good at it. Everyone has their own way. Yeah, I play totally different than... Or, not totally different, but I, I have a my own play style mm-hmm. that I utilize for... And it works. For myself. And what happens is, too, is I got I get to actually firsthand watch you adjust... Like, you know, find out, okay, this this is a part of my play style, this is not a part of my play style. I got to watch you determine who you are in the game. And then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I have certain ways I do things. I, I don't play a certain style of things. Like, like the way Justin plays, plays off of reaction, I like to play off of um... Abusing the system. <laughs> <laughs> so, the thing is that you say Justin playing off a reaction. What happens is, by him playing that way for a long enough span of time, that is just second nature. So it's yeah, not. De- it's de- definitely. I and, agree. And with that, it's just like with you, with. Uh, with popping off a prayer or rolling at the right time, that's second nature. That's just the the, the set of controls that he's choosing to, to kind of master and go with. Whereas, once he's got that down, to the point where he's, he's not, he, it's just a part of what he does, oh, dude, just boom, blow through so much. Yeah. You know? Now, that said, though, if anyone gets hung up on that and thinking this is the only way I can play the game, that's going to stunt that growth. That's going to stop that. Instead, being open to, okay, this is a part of my play style, and I see that I can do, I understand that this is what I'm focusing on now because I'm really, I resonate with this. And then eventually, you know, boom. So you found where you resonate. He found he found where he resonates. And what's really cool, it's just like with your play style, saying that you keep going at it, eventually you're going to win. Everyone everyone has that. Everyone gets that. That's It's so relieving understanding that finally and not judging everything that way. It's like everyone's going to get it, you know, on games and all that. It's much more satisfying Watching someone else play a game and not creating expectations that they don't meet. Because I play the game differently, I play the game differently, he plays the game differently. So it's one of those that being a passive observer and understanding, oh, he's a gamer, he's got this. Okay, now I get to see his process. Makes it even better. Makes it makes it to where if I watch games, it's actually enjoyable. As opposed to scrutinizing, like, oh, I'd have done this, you know. If anything, you can take those like, oh, that's a good idea. I might, I might add that. I might test that out a little bit. I might, I might try out some of that. I like, I like how he did that, you know. Or you know what? I've tried that. Oh, that's how he does it. Oh, I remember. He's gonna figure it out this way. Yeah, that's how you do it. Getting to watch 
and seeing like, oh, he's almost got it. Oh, there you go. Come on. Yeah. Come, come on, little guy. It's just like in Deadpool 1, whenever, was it, no, it was Deadpool 2, whenever he had it, he got ripped in half. No, it was Deadpool 1. And so he's doing the baby legs thing. You remember that? Mm. He's like, oh, come on, little guy. Come, come on, little guy. Like, you know, like, and so Deadpool's like walking with like the I baby I feel like legs. that was Deadpool 2. No, that was, mm. even, it was, it was Deadpool 2. Because oh, yeah, because he got his he had the tiny hand of the first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Such a good movie. They're both good, good movies. Oh, and yeah. what's, what's great about the Deadpool thing is I got to firsthand witness the... The you okay, so in the first movie there's this scene where he he's listening to the music and he jumps down into the SUV mm-hmm. and he marks all these guys in slow motion. They have two different song and, versions, yeah. And he, he crotch crotches this guy. <laughs> well that that clip you probably are well well aware was surfaced like eight years before the movie ever was released. I remember that, yeah. And nobody knew if it was a legit movie, mm. if it was just like some mad creation of of that- someone's child. Like a like a random random creation. What it was? was Ryan Reynolds loved the idea and a few other people were like, you know what? Let's just put something together and put it out there. And then the studios, like fans are going to make the studios want it. And so that's what they did. So yeah, I, I, I do remember when that happened. I remember and that. I remember going on I, for a long time. I watched that clip and I kept that clip. And you know, I was a, I was able to be a part of that clip and then like, literally like a long ass time passes and they come out with the movie and that clip is in the movie mm-hmm. so it's just like a crazy uh nostalgic uh badass mm-hmm. reliving moment to to see that a, happen i'm remembering what that because they used two different songs when he jumps into the SUV, there's the, the, oh, this is my shit. All the girls gonna be like that. You got that. <laughs> oh, God. Cause ain't no hollow back, girl. There's that one. Well, uh, they used, they used two different songs. They had to switch it out whenever they came out with the movie. Oh, man. Yeah, that was a good one. What was that? Technology, man. I'll show it to you. But yeah, I thought it was hilarious how they kept that movie scene. Like, just... Or they were able to... I don't know if they recreated it, if they... They they just... If it was already a part of the movie, they just held the movie. Yep. Because the only um, remnants of a Deadpool was the fucking the the game, the comics, and the crazy looking Deadpool on X Men. There was no like movies or TV shows about that. So I just, uh, hang on, I, that just, I, I just now saw like some, I was like, oh, she's cute, she's pretty, she's got cool blue hair, and I looked at it, and I'm like, wait a minute, Dragon Ball Z, I was like, what the fuck, teaser trailer, 2005, 2025, Ryan Reynolds, Jackie Chan, I was like, they're coming out with a new Dragon Ball live action, 
Assuming it's real. I hadn't watched the trailer yet. And it's just one of those that, like, I'm with, like with, with Jackie Chan and Ryan Reynolds, that'd be. Bonkers. It wouldn't make sense, though. That'd like, be bonkers. I have to. It, they'd have to use characters that, like, Ryan Reynolds isn't. Like, I don't see him as anyone in, in Dragon Ball Z. I mean, he's an amazing actor, so he they probably is something there. I mean, he wears a full suit in Deadpool, so. You know. He could wear. His oh, he's he's always been a great actor. He, ever since the nineties and all that. Ah, leaked footage was in twenty fourteen, and then it was released in twenty sixteen. Well, so it wasn't that many years. The mo- the first movie came out eight years ago, um, but two years prior to that was when that scene was leaked. So yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It felt like forever. Mm-hmm. It felt like seven years, but it was only two. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dollars and cents, maybe even millions. <laughs> okay, I don't want to. I'm, I'm not going to spoil uh, looking up any more Deadpool stuff because it's showing it's showing Deadpool three trailers and yeah, even yeah. Brad Pitt I, I, about I, I, his cameo <laughs> in the Marvel, which is hilarious. Like, because he was <laughs> they just had him. He was the invisible guy. And it's like yeah. how do you get a big name actor in the movie and put him at? It's like you know. <laughs> That was perfect. It was literally, you only see him for the, <laughs> like, that's it. It's just like, that's brilliant. Like, that's hilarious. Oh, God, dog, you. That whole, <laughs> <laughs> that whole scene where they're coming to Ellie, it's so, like, the x Force, like, yeah, he built a team, and it's, it's like, oh, my God. Hey, but he saved them all in the oh. outro. Yeah. And it was, I was like cheering, like laughing, because it was just that good. It's like, thank like <laughs> It was just that good, yeah. Because <laughs> it was one of those, they hyped him up so hardcore, and then instantly gone. You're just like, what was all that hype for? <laughs> like, it's like, God, dog, dude. An invisible man had, like, oh. the most potential, dude. And it was Brad Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> I, big name actor. Because <laughs> like, oh it's one of those that, like, you're like, is there really an invisible guy? And then you see the parachute coming down. It's like, oh shit, there is an invisible guy. And you're like, that's cool as shit. And then, you're like, oh my god. Oh. God, dog it. <laughs> And the man, the civilian, what's his name? The the one that trying to save the acid guy from the wood chipper and he just gets oh marked on it. And, and, <laughs> All right, put that on. You can put that on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Because it's so hype. Building them up. It's like, yeah, yeah. And then they just like. <laughs> they all jump out like in you. Oh, man. Uh, we're not going like, to. I'm just putting, I'm putting it on. They're, they're fucking like oh, in, in a triangle formation. Mm-hmm. And it's so epic. <laughs> and then it's, as soon as they hit their parachutes. Mm. <laughs> As soon as they pull their parachutes, it's like everything goes sideways. Oh, and then you got the lucky girl. That's just... Domino, yeah. She's just a part of flow. She's literally just she's just going with the flow. That means that's luck. She's just she just completely disregarded all fear and just doing it. That's that's just flow. That's God. People call it luck, but that's literally and that's the funny part. It's great. Alright. She literally does everything with her willpower. She's or will she's so sit. she's so in tune with the source of all creation 
that she's just going with the flow. It's like the source source is giving her, hey, you know, it's like you are worthy. Here's the path. Whatever, wherever steps you're taking, boom, boom, boom. Like I, you will literally be going through explosions, and there will be debris. All you do is just take and your steps. She's like, "Lady Luck, take the wheel and the the the." The fucking armored truck just does what it does. Yeah, because Lady Luck is just her fully realized God version of her, goddess version of her. That's one of those where it's like, it's like she is just doing it by faith. And it's it's one of those that she just calls it the name that she calls it because that's what she knows and that's okay. Because she'll, she'll figure it out. <laughs> and then Deadpool doesn't believe that uh, luck is a power, but then she's... She sees, she's the only one that survives. Like, okay, maybe there's... And yeah. that's the thing, too, is like... What's funny is turn, tur- taking them and then putting them into the anime perspective of what we've seen. And it's like, he's literally the re-zero in his own way. <laughs> because he literally, he can't die. <laughs> like, that's... And Deadpool's been trying to die, but it's literally, it's like, no... The source, God, your ultimate you, is not letting you because this is your this is who you are. And it's like, and so have fun with it. And that's what Deadpool does. And it's like it's it's I great. Mean, he literally died, and then was told it's just not time for you to go. Yeah, <laughs> like that. And that's the thing. And that's that's the part that anyone who's of the spirit understands that. And it's like that's the peaceful part. Whenever he gets, when he got to see his girlfriend, like his wife, his woman, and like he got to get the glimpse of her, that was, dude, that was a beautiful moment. And it's like, oh, it's like, all right, there you go. Yeah, you died, but guess what? You're not done yet. You'll get you you get this. It's waiting for you. Keep doing what you're doing because you're fucking good at it. it that's that was you were you were meant for this. Yeah. And, and then it's like, oh god, why? And it's like. Don't worry. All right, here's the scene. Cause this is and then he movie. ended up traveling back in time and mm-hmm. saving her. I'm very curious. Uh, that's one of those that that that's where my uh, that's where my head cannon went. But they're coming up with a third one. It's like you know what? Let's see. Let's see how. Okay. Let's see how far the head cannon actually was cannon or not. So it's one of those that. He, he is eventually going to get to be with her. It's like, how do we get to see that? That's the fun part. That's what I like doing. He's like, okay, we know it's going to work well, out. Well, I mean, we know the the time traveling device works. Mm-hmm. Did they actually fix it? So here's the thing. With that time that's, travel... That's where the, the canon part mystery is, you know? Because they didn't fix it until after the end credit scene. Another thing to remember, too, is that the other Marvel stuff, they did the time machine stuff, too. And so it's one of those that, like, all the timelines are converging again. Um, so, regardless of if that's the way or not, even if he were to go, you know, do the time travel and bring her back, that is a way. Who knows if that's the way? What we do know is that despite how it happens, that's what's guaranteed. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, which is, of that's, course. Where the, that's where the part where we can do that, you can do that with anything in your, whatever you pray for, you can put it, and the guaranteed pile. And at that point, being open to it. So, here's a scene real fast. This, I, I mean, this I already know. This I'm going to watch you it. You don't got to show me. You, you can watch it yourself. Of the light breeze. You're in this shit now, mustache. I'm only yelling to the You're in this shit now, mustache. Oh, yeah. Go, go, go! Bam, 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 b
Because they get in the formation of an X and everything in the air. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> the, the formation is there, but as soon as the parachutes hit. Probably could have had them deploy at a better time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Huh? Oh, there they are. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Is he the best one? Jackstar. Okay. Jackstar. What? What? He's both. He has the insane. Ooh, that did not sound good at all. Really? All right, we can do this before. Invisible guy. You got this, buddy. That's the stuff. That's the X-Force Carriage. X-Force really give it to you. Just ask anyone in Brooklyn. You're a goddamn superhero, you. X-Force. <laughs> He's going to try and save him. Yeah. Here we go, people. We're next for us. <laughs> oh no. Ah. <laughs> the <sick> vomit. <laughs> <laughs> comedy goals, yeah. Bro. Fucking comedy goals. <sighs> this stuff is great. EDM? Yeah, it looks like, like you want something there. Someone. What did you win? Oh, that's just some commercial. I, now I was reading someone. It's HR box. Some I was reading someone's comment on there. And it's one of those that like. It's like that's a perspective. I, I see where you're where you believe that to be, but X Force. Gonna give it to you. <laughs> Going to give it to you. <laughs> I don't know. What's the difference between gonna give it to you and going to give it to you, if any? Apostrophe and subtracting the G. Gonna, or no, actually no. Gonna and going, gonna is like a slang version of going to. Okay. I thought so. Yeah, that's all. Gonna, yeah. Like I'm, I'm going to, I am, I'm a, I am, I am. I'm a, where it's I apostrophe M M A. I am going to. Yeah. That makes sense. X going to give it to you. He going to give it to you. What was that? That was the, I was checking the, uh, the ember. You ashes. remember to ember? They were just ashes at that point. Oh. Uh, there's Why? the time travel scene. Why wouldn't she ember though? I always remember Ember. End credit scenes, Deadpool 2, time travel fun scene. Are you uh, nostalgic right now? So Are you doing nostalgic moments? Oh, just fix it, Eleven, or I'll take it to the genius bar. Kid was or it's just been that long that you don't remember the scenes. It's been a minute since I've seen it. It's just fun to watch. <laughs> don't I? Have a good day. Uh, don't I? Have a good day. Bye. Bye, Kyo. It was probably a bad idea. What have we done? <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> She's one of my favorite characters too. Uh, what was it? Ne- uh, Negatonic Teen or something? Uh, teenage Super Warhead. Yeah. She, <laughs> some yeah, shit she's, like that. She, yeah, she's got... Yeah. She's great. She's great. I hope you 
The the back and forth between her and Deadpool is just always good. Oh yeah, and yeah, he did time travel to fix it too. I told you. <laughs> so that's what I mean. We we get yeah. we gotta see what's all actually canon and what's what's not canon. The marketing tool designed by Fox executives to keep Josh Brolin employed. Does that hurt? No. He's just laughing at that. And I need to feed my cat. Go home, Sugar Bear. Go home. Go home. Will you give Domino my email? Oh, yeah. Goes back to <laughs> the Wolverine movie. So you. See, that was the first Deadpool like yeah. that we He's got to see. Yeah. Hey, it's me. Don't scratch. Don't scratch. Just cleaning up the timelines. Look, eventually you're gonna hang up the claws. And it's going to make a lot of people very sad. Very uh, sad, yeah. One day, your old pal Wade's going to ask you to get back in the saddle again. <laughs> when he does, <laughs> say yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Love you. I really did not. God damn, that's beautiful. <laughs> Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Canada. I don't see what was wrong with that movie. I was a fan of Green Lantern. What about you? Boy, howdy. Did you like Green Lantern? Oh my gosh, hang on. I'll I'll give my input after the the, the four minute scene, which were a minute, and uh, we we got one minute and five seconds for me to finish this clip up before I put, give my commentary about whatever you were talking about. <clears throat> I don't even know what I was talking about. Yes, you are. We'll take care of that. I'm just trying to distract you from your your indulgement of. Of the one pool. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. All right. What do you crack his shoulder for? Maximum effort. Oh my God. What's he getting ready for? That's why you're such a little bastard. No one's ever changed you. Yeah, you got a big old stinky in there, don't you? Kind of smells like Hitler's anus, which. Which would make sense. Is that Hitler? Yeah. I think we both is know he, I don't have what it is takes he, to do this. So is he crazy Hitler? Hitler? He's come back Hitler's with a cable. cable. He loves killing kids. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to come back with my friend Cable. <laughs> he loves killing kids. Is there any more to this? That's great. Gee. What's your opinion about Green Lantern? So. Ryan Reynolds doesn't like it. A lot of people didn't like. What they did not like was that it was edited and and written without and and actually like the the effects the love that it deserved was not in it, and so that was the issue with everybody with Green Lantern. Now that said, great actors and the characters. Like the actual characters of the of the like the actual source material, the source material is good. What they did to it, certain people like it, certain people did not. What was an issue with me, and probably the only real issue really, was that they did lackluster, uninspired CGI. He he his suit was just purely CGI. He didn't he didn't they didn't show like it 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 was just the CGI just was not where it should have been or could have been. And and they they didn't create the story or structure necessarily in a way that allowed for a a, a conducive sequel. And 
because Green Lantern is such a, a huge superhero, like literally his his whole thing is like the, the Lantern Corps is literally uh, is it Will Willpower? Is that what the Green is? I will say like the the potential of the movie did seem far greater than what it could have been. Yeah. So for for me, I, that's a movie I, I ended up I would watch with my mom, and it was one that because of like so it's like wait a minute I grew up in the nineties I grew up loving the Spawn movie even though that has some of arguably the worst CGI it's like eh, I can appreciate I it like for what the it is. Spawn movies. Oh, I love it yeah and that's the thing too many people got too too into the the visuals and it's like. I grew up with a, 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 the day and age of pixels and glitches. It's like, you know what? If it's a good, if it's a good movie, it's a good movie. If it's if it's something I like, well, I don't have to judge it. I don't have to rate something that I like it for everyone. I don't have to let other people's ratings be my own. So, ah, it's a movie that, thankfully, they can they can do, you know that people have fun with it yeah. in whatever way, and that's okay. Like it's that's... one of those that I, I've got, yeah. That's why I would, for me, it was hard for me to understand why people didn't like it. And it's good to hear from your perspective because I still ask other people and like to hear from different perspectives. Yeah, there's, yeah. And for, for me, honestly, like, I'm not a... It's what's good about it is that that was the that's the only green live action Green Lantern movie I know of, and at that point anything that comes out afterwards, you know that people can at least be like you know what it's better than how that was but you know what that one at least broke the mold and at least put it out there in a live action format. There's, yeah. If nothing else, we can be grateful for that. At least someone did something. Now, if you liked it. If you didn't, at least it was done, and now it can be built upon. It can be revisited. It can be re. There, there's at least it was done. Like, for example, the um... and it, 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 I, I, I got to at least because of it. I'll, 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 excuse me. Because of it, I have memories, and I've got, I've gotten to go and look into the Green Lantern more so because of it. So again, I. Like yeah, I'm, I've I'm got super curious about. The, I'm not one to read into manga or comics. Comics I, Explained was a great. Yeah, yeah. I used to watch that all exactly, the time, and exactly. I love that guy. Yeah. Um, and and honestly, even even like I used to watch a lot of critics, comic critics, and 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 like all sorts of. I used to watch a lot of critics, and then it came down to the point where it's like, you know what? Like, I'd rather just hear a neutral, unbiased. Than constant criticism. I'd like to at least hear the story from someone who loves it. Right. You know? And at that point, if I if like me doing that, I'm going to I'm going to determine for myself. Exactly. I'm gonna come up yeah, and that's so you know, I'm glad I'm glad you did ask that question. I'm glad I was able to like when I, when the initial question was put out there. There was the old perspective that was like, Ooh, and it's like, how do I really feel about it? Why do I feel that way about it? What do I know? Okay. There's, there's, there's true soul that can be in something, and then there could be the soullessness. The soullessness comes from the, 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 the perspective of corporate blah, 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 blah. Whereas the true soul is, look at, the positives. Where are the positives? Look at people. Obviously, thought that there was something here when it was put together. Where is that? What can I? Where can I see people really putting their efforts and putting everything in? At least they went for it. It's like that. That right there. It's like you know that actually makes me appreciate something that was getting ready to be talked nonsense about. Like there's about to be a little bit of shit talking. And it's like, well, really, just. Get rid of the criticism part. What do you like about it? It's like, hmm. 
you know what? That's, yeah. If anything, that, that makes it to where now uh, you, you can literally say effects don't matter. You know, special effects don't matter. What was good about it? What do I like about it? I like that perspective a lot more. What 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 can be taken? What can be good? What good can be gleaned from it? What good can be understood from it? What 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 of it that I like can that I or what about the of, movie? Can you appreciate about it? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say what is likable. I feel that asking what is likable is a better a better thing versus. talking shit about it constantly you know so okay what is likable obviously there's something likable or the person that made it wouldn't have put something wouldn't have done something there's something they liked in it what did they like does it resonate with me cool at that point what happens is i understand my preferences of liking of things and i can go about things in an open-minded way when you do that what happens is something that you don't resonate with you're not going to be open-minded to it because it's nothing that's on your vibe if you're open-minded to what you do know is good, what you do know is 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 enjoyable, what you do know that is likable, when you're open-minded to likable things, then you're going to see the things that are likable in it. Then you, then those likable things are going to come more to you. If there's something you don't like, that if there's something that's divisive, eventually you're going to just let that go. You're eventually going to not focus on that. You're not... It, it's one of those that, okay, that's good. Improvements happen constantly. I mean, literally, looking at the 90s movies and seeing their special effects versus now, obviously, improvements happen. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean 90s movies aren't still great. Oh, always. Always are. Even, even 80s, 70s, 60s, yeah, 50s, yeah, yeah. black and white movies. Yeah. So, okay, what's good about it? Okay, now, if anything, what you can do is you can take those and and... If anything, now you've got a genre. You can utilize time as genres, time periods, genres. Okay, there you go. Now, anyone that wants to make a type of a genre of that classic black and white with no audio, oh, there you go. As a matter of fact, I, I, have, I, mean, I was there's always... There's still movies that come out in black and white. And it was one of those that as a kid, it always threw me off that people stopped making movies like that. I grew up in the, my, my grandparents from World War II era, and the movies that they watched, it's like, how come, it's like, you know, I got to watch them anytime I go to my grandparents' house, and I love that. I got to see, you know, because they'd have it on TV, that, and it's like, that's really cool, I like that. It's like, why did they stop making movies like that? You don't have to make the same type of movie that everyone's making. I feel that in the, 2000, in the, in the time that we're in now, for someone to make a black and white film, with no no audio except for just music, that would be cool as shit. That's oh, yeah. what they were constricted to back then, or that's the way that they knew how to do it back then. And for us to do it now, it's one of those that's paying homage to. That's that's appreciating art despite how the medium was, despite what the limits were at that time, or what the perceived limits were, or where the techno technological limits that were told were there, what others believed at that time. If anything, it wasn't technological. It's just what was understood and what was known. So it's one of it's 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 understanding the message and seeing it as if you were there, as if you were one of the people. It's it's just like it's revisiting an old medium. It's revis revisiting. Okay, why was Shakespeare good? Why were these plays so good? You're getting to see put yourself in that perspective. And then seeing what's good from that perspective, or seeing from other perspectives, from from just just being being open to absorbing what is good, allow the good to flow in. Any of the bad, don't resonate with it. It's gonna pass. It's done with. What's good? What do you like? What is good? Okay, keep allowing for those good things. Keep your eyes peeled for those good things. You're gonna find those good things everywhere. It's just, it's whatever your focus is on, what your attention and intention is on, is where you're going to navigate to. Because you're going to speak that way, you're going to be that way, you're going to do those things. What you like is going to show up more. Whatever you, whatever you put energy to is what you're going to get more of. If there's energy and stuff you don't like, if you keep giving it energy, guess what? It's going to keep showing up. 
Whereas if there's something you do like, you keep putting energy into that, that's even better. Because guess what? It's going to keep showing up. You know what I never understood? What's that? You can make the same games but have different skins. Different feels every time? Well, I'm I'm not sh- Oh. Let me finish my point before you try to make a point. Apologies. Um, something that I... I, um... feel like is weird. Games are able to copy other games as long as they don't have the same skins or the same, you know, I guess names but why is it that movies can't copy the same concept as their own and make a movie that is greatly similar so but just change the name and the the skin because I feel like there have been so so let let me let so I've got I I I could point out or I would like I'd like to put this certain way because you bring up a very good point and with that it's like okay you're on to something let me okay reason I bring that up is because they remade um What's him to call it? Suicide Squad. Oh, the movie. Yeah, with different actors. And uh, they, well, whole... they they use they they because they didn't first, change out characters. First, first, it was different characters, not necessarily different actors. Different characters. And they well, use, they, they use, have different. Um, they still have the the chicken there, Gal Gadot. Well, the, the it's one not chicken. the witch anymore. It's not the yeah. Those fire are different guy those anymore. Aren't act- yeah, those those are different characters. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And but it's it's still Suicide Squad. That's what Suicide so that's in the comics, the Suicide Squad, that's what they did is they would get like it's that is the premise of the Suicide Squad is that they bring in pe- like you know these these criminals to be a part of the the teams and the chances are they're probably not going to survive. That's that's the whole point like that it, they put them on 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 missions that most likely they're not going to come back from. So that's why they were able to do that with the first movie to the second movie because that's what the Suicide Squad is. That's literally it's it's just like you know there's going to be different people in that team, and so that's how they were able to do that. And and they did a really good job, really with it. And, and it's a, it was a safe move to make choosing a team that is a fluid team with members that come in and out of the team versus something that has more established members of like the justice league that has superman batman wonder woman aquaman martian manhunter green lantern uh hawkman hawk girl like there's there's three that are always going to be in order for it to be the justice league the original og for the original justice league you're going to have superman batman wonder woman oh the flash any of the other any of the other members are people that are going to be swapped out, or they are founding members that are just implied, and and so that's how they were able. That's that's how they're able to get away with it for uh, for the Suicide Squad and the and the, the the I guess the the other successor that doesn't isn't hardcore tied to the canon of the first one. And as a matter of fact, James Gunn. Has always been, always, honestly, he is an incredible director. Hands down, probably one of the best directors. Like I, I enjoyed both Suicide Squad movies, by the way, thoroughly. Yeah, from it, it, it took for me to remember how I mentioned. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of entertainment. Yeah, and that's the way to do it. That's and that's the part that so many people that that's that's the part where critics like. It's good to appreciate something. It's just to be able to appreciate something to the point that you're not that you you 
you can at least give a give a you know hey if you like this kind of stuff here's what, like if you can give if it's like hey this is where i found entertainment if you find this type of entertainment you're gonna enjoy this like that's good that is good i'm glad i'm glad of that for me the first time i had watched suicide squad the first one used to be very close-minded was very what watched it from a very close-minded point of view and i'm you know it's like i'm glad i'm glad that i can actually let go of narrow points of view narrow 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 mindedness in those regards it's like okay and it, what i what i did like about the movie i i first of all there are good actors the the part of me that did not care for the part the parts of suicide squad that were were the the issues was using big name actors however considering that not uh, uh, other actors didn't really ever play the parts of those certain characters that's okay like who will smith's character was deadshot or which one what, what was so cuz there's uh, there's uh, Edris Alba's character in the comics those characters are similar already as it is that's that's the part where that's the confuse that's the confusion that's mm -hmm. the, okay so first of all it's one of those that like i i know Idris Alba and i if i if you put Idris Alba and Will Smith i'm going to know them. the characters they played as first of all if you put the characters next to each other i'd have an issue with those characters to begin with so <laughs> Who 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 were their characters? It, it comes down to their obscure characters to begin with. Yeah. So, an enlightened point of view for myself to take is that hey, those are obscure characters. Who cares what actors put behind that name now? Get over it. Okay, cool. Now I can enjoy the movie a little more. Now now I'm allowing myself to enjoy it more. So okay, that's cool. Because I've watched the first one a few times. First time was like, ugh. Second time was like, okay. And you know what? Watching this again, I don't like that a little more. It's like, yeah, I still, still see issues with that. And so, you know what? Different perspective. Okay, you know what? What did they do right? Okay, boom, boom, boom. All right, cool. And third time, seeing it's like, all right. What's good is good, and what's not, eh. I'm not going to get upset about it. It doesn't do any good. It's already made. They made another one that came out afterwards. It's like, okay, well, they they hit the head, you know, the, they hit the, 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 the nail on the head, the hammer, hammer on the head of the nail. Anyways, they got it right on these parts. These other parts, well, thankfully they corrected it in this one. It's like, either way, you know what? Like, I'm glad they did a lot more comedy in the second one. Yeah, I, the first one, the first one was... They they had an opportunity to take it with a, a whole like they they changed out what it was going to be. That was the that was the issue honestly, was that they did a bait and switch of what the movie was going to be from the first one to 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 or from the preview to what they actually put out there. That's if anything, I feel that less previews for a movie the better, or scenes or there's there's definitely a way to do it because. Part of the reason that they do stuff like that is because of the psychology of people of, of just at least keeping it into the in, in the consciousness and so like, okay we know people are gonna like this this this. What you can do to make help a movie to actually resonate and shine is don't show all your best scenes. Don't show all the all the, show the scenes that give give little glimpses of some awesome scenes, but give glimpses of what like. Give more, more, give a, let it be an actual preview of what the actual movie is and what the story is. Let the, let the preview be honest to the movie and yeah. to the vibe. That's what, that's how previews should be used. And that's I mean, how, that's how Hollywood screwed themselves over in so many ways in the past. Yeah. A lot of people had a problem with the Indiana Jones trailer. Oh, well, uh, which one? Um... That they um, showed the well, it was a was it the Crystal Skull or was it the the newest 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 one? The I, newest, I lost track. The newest, most Indiana Jones. So good to know to stay away from trailers. Thank you. 
Well, have you seen the news in Indiana Jones? I would love to. So, so I'm saying I, I, I can't say that. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> that's all, that <laughs> that's the whole reason I asked. I, I, I grew up. I grew up as a huge Indiana Jones fan. As a matter of fact, Harrison Ford is actually one of my favorite actors. Always has been. Always will be. And uh, and with that, he is like uh, you know like part part of what's great about Harrison Ford is that. Uh, <laughs> He went into it at such a young age that, as an actor, and you got to see him grow up. And so with that, it's like, okay, I can kind of equate some of how he, his character acted to or acts in these movies to, to ways that I'd like to be. You know, okay, cool. You know, that's To me, a good actor is able to encompass a character in a way that people are able to resonate with that character, or at least that they're able to understand that character yeah good actor good actors are ones that are able to portray a character in a way that someone can resonate with that character or they can understand that character and appreciate that character mm -hmm. that's that to me is always a good actor definitely yeah like i even like for me what what's been stopping you from watching the movie if you were a fan of it um same thing that stopped me from playing Dark Souls 3 and beating it back when I first had it is that taking my time. What's the rush? I'm just enjoying it along the way. Which is, that's that's one of those that, like, I'll watch the movie eventually. I think part of it was, part of the reason why I didn't go, like, flock to the theaters was because of the fact that it was one of those where it's like, okay, uh, I'm I mean, it's never about putting yourself into a rush. It's just like if, like, one would assume if a person enjoys something, they would look forward to going to do it as quick as possible. There's delayed gra There's something to be said about delayed gratification. So, if anything, it's it's a, first of all, part of the reasons why I didn't go and see it was because there was so much, and like, uh, I think, feel like there's like been three of them since it came, so there's the Crystal Scroll, Crystal Skull, because Raiders of the Lost Ark was my favorite one, which that one was like the third, wait, was it Raiders? It was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Do you know how many there are? Like, total, Indiana besides Jones, the newest one. Indiana Jones, uh, Temple of Doom, uh, Crusader of the Lost Ark. Oh, there's, there's the, uh, oh, good lord, what are they? There's the three with Harrison Ford. Then there was the young Indiana Jones, which came out in the 90s, and it didn't have Harrison Ford. It was some young guy acting as, 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 uh, as Indy. And so it's like, okay, you know, people don't talk about that. There might have been one or two of those, but people usually don't mention those, which... I mean, it's whatever, you know, it's like, okay. okay, if they do the, if they do the character right, they do the character right. Me having watched, like, because Harrison Ford is such a, it's such an amazing like actor. 007 series. No, actually, uh, Sean Connery, which acted as uh, Indiana Jones' dad in the, in the Last Crusade. That's what it was. It's Temple of Doom, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Last Crusade. That's though that's the, the original trilogy that George Lucas put out. Um and Harrison Ford. Uh Sean Connery acted as Indiana Jones's dad, which Harris or Sean Connery was is one of the original and probably one of the best bonds of all time. That's for sure. That's her, you know, that's yeah. So that's why you mentioned uh James Bond. Yeah. Yeah. Um all right, so there's those three plus that, so there's four, which sounds like a prequel, which spinoff prequel. Some people don't consider certain things canon. It's whatever. Uh, then there's the temple. Of, there was the temple of doom, or no? That was that the no. Then there's the, the crystal, uh, crystal the uh, something for the crystal skull, which it had like some alien skull or something like that. Like didn't see that movie. I saw bits and pieces. Didn't see it. And then I think there's another one that came out, and then maybe a third one. Are there six movies? Minus the prequel, or so wait, wait. so roughly six or seven. Six or seven, okay. Between 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 six and seven, so six and seven, but then that range, yeah. 
So, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Part of it is that there was a lot of bitterness and judgment towards the studios because of types of movies and because of the the feel that they're going for a money grab and all that. And it's like, it's like you know what? Like, let's watch it whenever I'm able, like, with, with, with a, a calm, calm perspective with a with a with an open mind and then if there's anything that sticks out it's gonna if there's something that i don't like it's gonna stick out it's gonna stick out i don't need someone else telling me oh hey i didn't like this like oh yeah yeah so part parts of it was that i my myself had to get over the judgment of the movie that everyone else's judgment already put out there which there may be validity to it there may not what it comes down to is that I, 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 I now I appreciate the scripture even more so. I mean, I always appreciated it. It's just now I'm openly appreciating it. Honest, openly, honestly, openly appreciating it. And unashamedly. And, and the fact that scripture explains that, you know, the son was sent to this world not to judge it, but to uh, so that it might have salvation, so that the world might be saved. You know, it's like, okay, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not here to judge. I'm here to, to pick out what is good to, to allow for that to be in my garden of creation, allow that to be a part of my world. Okay. Now I can actually, now at that point, if it's a sin for you, do it not. If it's something that I would enjoy, well, okay, let me go, let me enjoy it. Let me see how I like it. And, you know, just like with the, 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 the Disney Star Wars movies, Studios are, are doing a, a generic, what's it called? And if anything, I can just allow that to be fan fiction or fiction for someone else. You know, like I know that George Lucas's vision and all that was even, you know, was great, was, was awesome. You know, okay, so none of that, none of those need to be. Like what's already said is set. At that point, I can I can pick out the people that I can pick out the canon that I like. I can pick out the group. I can go with that group. And if there's if it's again, it's just like what I love about even just Viking Fest, you know, or just any any festival, any rena rena Renaissance festivals, Comic Cons, any of those conventions, any of those. What happens is you're gonna get people that like it because it's popular. And then you're going to get people that are that like it because their own view. You you're going to resonate with the people that like it for the same reason that you like it. Those people are going to be around you. That kind of what you like, what you like, what you resonate on is what others are going to resonate on too. Like you you had mentioned like you know who's to say that someone else doesn't like it over here you know and it's one of those that that's the beautiful part that's that's how that's how much free freedom we have is that. Everyone's going to find what they resonate with. Everyone's going to go to what they resonate with. The movies that resonate in a way that audiences are going to like, those are going to stick around. What happens is eventually enough people get tired of some nonsense and then what people didn't like, that falls off and dies. That gets replaced with what is liked, what is good, what is what is actually... Glub, glub. Glub, glub, exactly. Yeah. All is glove, glove. All is glove, glove. It's, it's literally a part of the cycle. What happens is, it, it you know that that old energy gets cleansed and refurbished and return like and and repurposed. Repurpose your energy to 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 actually being something that is conducive with your growth with with glove, glove. You know. Yep. If, if something is stagnant, if it's be hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm. Being lukewarm is s declaring something. That's funny. Three o three. It's four twenty. No, three o three. Oh, I got a alarm for three thirty three. So three o three. What are you grateful for? You know. <laughs> so. What about one two three? One, two, three is another one, two. Anytime, basically, if you notice any numbers pop up, 
or if you keep seeing a certain thing, it's like that's probably there's something there. You know, it's like oh, what a coincidence! I keep oh, I keep looking at the clock at this time. I oh, I always notice this. Like, okay, well, maybe that's a, a good time for you to just like how I mentioned stoplights or red lights or traffic light, just lights. <laughs> Anytime, if the color's red, that's an opportunity. Oh, you know what? What am I grateful for? Hmm. Good question. I'm grateful that I even have an opportunity to stop and actually count my blessings. Ah. Huh. And then instead of sitting there, oh, I'm so tired of this light being red. Ah! Instead of, of focusing on rage and, and, and all of that, of, of, of being in those low vibes, of that low vibration, instead I'm like, what am I grateful for? Huh. Hmm. That's a good question. Then start thinking about different things to be grateful for. And then on that one day, that one day you stopped and you were grateful and you, instead of being enraged and even thinking about just running that light, you stop and you exercise gratitude. And then what happens is box truck. Oh, wow. That box truck just blew through. Woo. And took out an old lady. Right? Or well, it turns out that old lady was on her way to go and like blow up an orphanage or something like you know, like oh well so hey, you know, hidden blessings. You, you never know. And maybe that old lady, she didn't really want to go and take out that orphanage, but she was just ready to be done. And it's like, okay, you know what? you 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 desire to see your loved ones, your family again. You know what? Is this really what you want to do? And what happens is if there was a void, there was a delay inside of her. It's like you know what? No, I do live. I do desire love. I don't want any more of these angry, you know, emotions. What do I do with this bomb shot? Box truck. <laughs> and then now she's there with her loved ones. She realized who she really is, and then that old flesh left her. All of that anger and frustration of wanting to blow up that orphanage for whatever angry reasons an old, uh, an old angry lady would have. And the box truck driver, he is like, oh no, what happened? The box truck took control, bud. It wasn't you. <laughs> the box truck is a divine being that, that has surpassed the, the comprehensions of, of mankind. <laughs> like, it's like, it's okay. You were simply in the box truck as it took over. <laughs> you know about the box truck. <laughs> Trust us. <laughs> We've seen it in anime, man. <laughs> Uh, even the box trucks are just simply literally a vehicle for God to the, the universe, God's source to, to bring about a lesson. You know, it'd be uh, <laughs> hilarious. What's that? A AMV box truck <laughs> compilation. I feel that if, if a young child were to see that, it might create a phobia inside of them. <laughs> and so I, I refuse to, uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather do something. I mean, you're not wrong. That would be hilarious. However, it's like, man. Ooh. Because, like, there's some <laughs> crazy AMVs for, like, Berserk and Ruby and, you know, just, like... Gory ass uh, shows. Yeah, and that's the thing is like like you know, sin is fun for a season. Now, what are the odds that someone is gonna see some giant you know twelve foot snake demon walking around, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna have my, oh, I'm ready to fight. The, oh, like what what are the odds you're ever gonna see that? And it's like, okay, well, having the you know big great sword. I'm like, oh yeah, you With know that's that's a, a box truck. <laughs> Again, I'd rather not, let's not let people be associated to uh, to fear of box trucks. No matter how much anime is like, oh god. And next thing you know, like <sighs> they're gonna imagine they see a box truck and just have a heart attack. Yeah, I like that one anime. I'd rather not. Do that. What, was, what was funny was that there's a. Oh gosh, that's so hilarious. <laughs> it's like, no, you, you, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I know, you died. I was like, what? It's like, from a box truck? It's like, no, no, you, it was the fear of it. You just pissed yourself. Like, oh, but it was very noble. Like, oh my gosh. No, there's a, there's an Instagram of something where I saw where it was like this giant 18 wheeler and it was like sucking up. Uh, it was, it was like, a, it was like sucking up paint off the, like, you know, like the white lines of paint. Yeah. yeah. It's like, how do you do that? 
And so that's really cool. It's like this big old, like, you know, like 18 wheeler doing that. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, because it was a comedy thing, someone ended up showing where it's like Optimus Prime, but they put like their eyes and their mouth was like, what? I don't have a problem. You guys just don't know how to have a good time. <laughs> like, it's like with Optimus Prime. You have a, it's like Optimus Prime doesn't have a cocaine problem. You just don't understand how to, how to give, have a good time. Yeah. It's, it was like, that's funny. <laughs> that's great. Uh, People are so good with their edits, man. Yeah. I, I love the, the edit where they have the Breaking Bad scene and the th- uh, Avengers mashed together. So people keep making a bunch of edits because people find things funny. Like, you know what? This would be funny with this. You know, like, I ended up seeing one where it's the Sopranos and uh, it was this Italian guy going around and grading this, like, this home ex cooking class. And he's sitting there talking all this shit and he walks up to this one black kid. He's like, no, no, you fucking made some good food right there. Let, let me fucking tell you, you know. <laughs> but, like, they're totally two different scenes. Yeah. And it's, like, complete out of context. And it's like, that's funny. Like, if anything, yeah, you def- If I would have, if there's going to be a home ec cooking class to take, you bet your ass, your sweet ass, you take the one with the fucking Italian guy fucking being the teacher. Because he's going to fucking teach you a thing or two, man. Like, because he knows good cooking because he had mama's cooking. Yeah. And that's that's the point right there, you know. The Italians know what's up, so. But yeah, no. So please tell tell me about the Breaking Bad and Avengers mashup. Like, oh my gosh, you haven't <laughs> seen it, dude. I've seen a lot of different ones. Like this is one that that sounds hilarious. I, I, it, it's it's the one where if you describe the scenes, I could probably create it in my own head. <laughs> it's the one where. Um... Okay, it's it's where the what's his name Ron White, the main character. Not Ron White. Um, uh, hang on, hang on, pause. I, I know his name. If you keep throwing out names, it's gonna it's gonna flood it and make it harder to remember. No, um, Walter White. Walter White. Yeah, Heisenberg. Yeah. Yeah. Mister White. Yeah, yeah. Uh, remember, I haven't seen the Walt. the, the show. It's so good. I've watched that, like, several times. It's so good. I still have yet to When you're ready watch to watch it. it, I'll watch it with you. That said... So, so many people that have said, told me, and I have, I have yet to even try it, so, you know. So, real fast, because they made it in such an amazing way, there's Breaking Bad, there's Saul Goodman, and there's El Camino. Saul Goodman is, like... It, that's from that's utilizing three of the main cast from the main cast of Breaking Bad, Walter White, which is yeah, and then there's Saul Goodman's the lawyer, w- and then I there's will, Jesse. I, w- I will tell you this: Kingpin. as a watcher of entertainment, I am not a fan to watch something if I already know what's going to happen to that character. So, for example, if the the two other shows that you mentioned, mm-hmm. they came out after Breaking Bad, correct? So, they're actually... But they're about the previous... It's, so, they're what they are. So, before you make it pass any judgments... Well, there is no judgment. I'm just trying to confirm because Star, me, Star, me, me Star Wars did it, and I have yet to... Well, I watched the first Star Wars with Justin. Episode 1 or A New Hope? Mm, I think it was A New Hope. Was it old school? Like, was it super... Was it, 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 it was old school. He could tell you. It was the... Shit, which... Did it have Darth Vader or did it have Darth Maul? Did he have one red lightsaber or was it a double-headed lightsaber? Two Man, red, it red. Was, I watched it literally one time and it was probably in 2019, 2020. It was when he was living at in the studio. Okay. So it was... It's, the recollection isn't there right so, now. So, all right, so... All right, all right, you said, so, was there, 
But all what I do was... you what do you remember? Let me let me let me do that, and I can tell which movie you saw because I'm not gonna. It's it's one of those that they 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 tell different perspectives of the story so that you better understand the story. That's that's that was the, like and honestly the prequels. I appreciate the prequels because because they they gave a it was it was it, it was a part of the story that he, that's why he made I've it seen that way. more Family Guy Star Wars than I've seen of the actual Star Wars. of the actual Star Wars and it gets in the way yeah. because yeah parodies parodies are are parodies there's a place for parody. That said, um, sometimes the parody, uh, you can allow that. Uh, well, as long as you can disassociate the parody to the original. Exactly. And I've yeah. only seen the original one time. And it, it was like... <laughs> so you, yeah, so, okay. So that so sounds like you saw A New Hope. Because I don't remember them doing a whole lot with Jar Jar Binks. And, uh, and, and actually with the Family Guy one. Seth Seth MacFarlane, he's he is a fan of Star Wars, and with that, he's gonna have his own. It, uh, okay, <laughs> you probably saw New Hope. I probably saw New yeah. Hope, which that's the fourth one, but it's the first one that was made. Right, it's the fourth. <laughs> it's the fourth in the series. However, that is the first one that was created. Now, the original creator, George Lucas, went on to make the prequel trilogy but then, so that now, you could better understand the... So you could better appreciate the characters of the original trilogy. So you could better understand Darth Vader himself, really. And now you have these uh, other shows like Mandalorian and... The rest of them, yeah. I couldn't list them. What they, what they did, what I appreciate about the Mandalorian, is the fact that it does not do anything to the original six movies, which is beautiful. It's one of those that does. Yeah. All it does is it is a story within the Star Wars universe, and it does a well enough job of not fucking with the OG stuff. As a matter of fact, whenever they made it to where, you know, Jango Fett or Boba Fett actually got out, like when they brought him back, that was like, thank you for actually acknowledging part of what is actually true, you know, and thank you for bringing one of my favorite characters, absolute favorites, to the to like bringing him back, you know, like in the books, he survived and he was a totally different person than what Disney tried to do with him. The fact that they brought him back into the man, like you know, within the Mandalorian, is like awesome, great job, thank you. That was a first of all the the, the guy that made the Mandalorian series. Uh, he was the guy that did the the Sopranos, as as a matter of fact, too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and he actually, it's funny enough too. He's also uh, one of the actors in um, some of the Marvel. Um, Avenger movies, like to, to, uh, he's in the Iron Man. Movies. He's he's happy. He's he's Iron Man's like you know like assistant dude. Yeah, brilliant guy. Made himself. He does he does so much with like all of. Uh, he's actually the guy that helped to even put together a uh, a coherent Marvel cinematic universe. He, yeah, he's one of the ones that helped out with it. Like he's a brilliant, amazing like, producer or something. He did something with it. Right. And so it's one of those where like you did a good job of Mandalorian. I like Mandalorian. Um, and the safe move is to not mess with what's already already established, and if anything, to only amplify and or even just take what's already been established and then make something new with it. You know, or or rather than to, to even like just take the concepts, make a story that's completely just within the Star Wars universe that doesn't destroy what's already established. Make it to where, OK, Luke ended up making a temple or doing do whatever. Now 
here's a new group of Jedis. Now we get to see their points of view. Or here's on a whole different part of the galaxy. Or hey, here's Old Republic. Here's what the video games. You know, do something like that. Don't mess with the original. Don't do anything that's going to destroy the original's continuity. Just make your own make make your own story within within that realm of that universe and that continuity. It's just like just like how one game of League of Legends does not uh, mean that is how all League is, you know? Like, just because one player views it a certain way or one, one character is this one way doesn't mean that's how it is for everyone and everything, you know? Like, the fans are not always indicative of what the story is. Uh, Sometimes, honestly, fans can kind of get in the way of the story. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I, I've always been the type to enjoy a story without having to have the fan base around. To, to without having to have the fan base. Like that's how. Honestly, you should be able to enjoy a story without having to see any other fans. That's how I like it. That's how I'm the type that I like my story, regardless of the fandom. As a matter of fact, keep the fans away from me so that I might enjoy the story for myself. And then what happens is, as I resonate with it, those fans, I'll, I'll meet them, you know, within the story. I'll, I'll, uh, we, we will find each other, you know, just like, again, with like with Dark Souls. You got a lot of naysayers. They go, oh, it's too hard. And oh, it's like, you know what? That's not how I see it. I mean, I grew up in the 90s with, with gaming where we hardly had computers. We... If you played a game and you went out and you talked about a game with someone, oh, tell me about it. Or, or like, oh yeah, that's a fun game. Or, oh, I never did, I hadn't played that one yet. Or, oh, I was looking at that movie store. Like, that's what I grew up with. I grew up with the, with the, with the freedom to form my own opinion, and 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 to do it in a in a fun, enjoyable way. Why sit there looking for someone else's opinion to grab onto? Never made sense. Doesn't make sense. Why? Why? Why let someone else's reason for it be your own reason? Make your own reason, and then if your reason lines up with someone else's, awesome. You found a friend in your fandom. Perfect. Now, if someone puts out a perspective that you know, well, I never thought of it that way. It's like, oh, that makes it appreciate it even more. Good. Someone that helps you to appreciate something that you love even more so, and helps you to have new life within it, good. That's the kind of people you should have around you. People that are pointing out positives and help you to grow. Have a growth mindset, man. Like, you know, even within the fandom, like have a, being able to, to, to enjoy a, uh, a, a story purely, that's beautiful. Three twenty-one. Three two one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So about the three shows, Breaking Bad and the other one. Oh yeah. The, yeah. the other two aren't prequels. So Better Call Saul. It starts out. All right. So there's a there's a character. And at the end of Breaking Bad, and they end up disappearing. And Better Call Saul starts out showing that character. You get to see them after the events of Breaking Bad. You get to see what they're doing. However, in snippets. And what happens is you get to see, because in Breaking Bad, you don't know all about the characters. You don't know their stories and all that. Breaking Bad flushes out a character. That's you know how in some movies they're like you know it's like ah like, okay you're probably wondering how I got here well you know they show the whole flashback dun 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 you know fucking Family Guy uses that shit all the time. Seth MacFarlane's like oh you're probably wondering how I got here and they're dun 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 or they they do something where they show you know like the you know, out here and the, the, they do that that thing where they show the they show the story. You know, oh, here's the ending that you're familiar with. Here's how I got here. Yeah. That's what that's what Better Call Saul does. Is it you get to see, you get to understand the character, you get to see 
every you get to learn this character and it's like oh man like whoo and then you get to see and it's just like i know where he goes it's like okay but then what you know okay how did he get to okay you get to see how they got to that point to be that person and then at the same time you're like but they're here at the end what happens like just wait and that that's i haven't finished breaking better call Saul yet because I've been waiting to get to see. And so it's one of those where that's that's one that I've been taking my sweet time. Even Breaking Bad, I took my sweet time once I... They came out in 2008. I didn't start watching it until... 2000 and... Fourteen? 2015. I didn't start watching Breaking Bad about, until about 2015 or so. It I'm came out still, in 2000. I'm still a little confused, though. Is the end of Breaking Bad the end of um, Better Call Saul? No. Or is it the beginning of Better Call Saul? It is... So, the end of Breaking Bad is technically not even the end. There's a, there's a huge chance that there's... like they, They've hinted at it, too, which is really cool. Breaking Bad. Like, is, I don't even know how Breaking Bad ends. So okay, I, just... I know. And, and so, so what I'm explaining is that that movie El Camino is it's that is the so Better Call Saul is like the the explanation and the loose ends of one of the characters in Breaking Bad. El Camino is the tying up the loose ends. Of one character. And it's phenomenal. Breaking Bad is like introducing the main character. And all of the extra characters within it. And. Better Call Saul. Is one of the main characters. And you're getting to see his origin story. As well as the continuation of what happens after Breaking Bad. His origin story is almost like it's one of those that, in the order way, to fully. The way I like to watch movies is in order, not release order. Okay. There are things in Breaking Bad that you will only understand in Better Call Saul after having seen Breaking Bad. That being said, if you watch, if you were to watch Better Call Saul, which chronologically, exactly, like, that's right. that's the term I was looking for. Okay, chronological order. Yeah. All right, chronological order. It would probably go, but you're going to be confused as fuck, and you're it's it's actually even going to give it. If you were to watch Breaking Bad, if you were to watch Better Call Saul, it would give spoilers to Breaking Bad. Now. If you watch Breaking Bad first, when you watch Better Call Saul, you're it's not that you have spoilers, it's that you understand. And so you get to see one character. It what they did with Bre with Better Call Saul is that they got to do they sh do they Pretty much it sounds like at some point in time they share similar timelines. So, the, the flashbacks, so okay, so Better Call Saul is essentially a flashback of the character Saul Goodman with the, with very, very brief scenes of what is actually going on with that character, which those events happen after Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul, or happened after Breaking Bad, excuse me. Better Call Saul takes place after Breaking Bad, with the majority of it being the backstory of a main character in Breaking Bad. Uh, like Better Call Saul is essentially a big flashback. It's it's the origin story of a main of one of the main characters that is integral to Better Call Saul. So that'd be the chronological order to watch it. Then. If you were to cut, if you were to watch it and then 
on the scenes that there are. Because on. I watch trailers. I, I don't really mind spoilers. Because I have not, seen, because I know that they're, I know that they are plan that there's a, they are planning to incorporate care like more. Uh, they, they, there, there have been rumors and there's, there have been intentions that have been put out there about continuing Breaking Bad or continuing p scenes of Breaking Bad, like in Better Call Saul. Because I have not watched all how I'm not even familiar with currently. Currently have not been keeping up with. Let me let me take my eyes out of that. Currently have not been keeping up with how many seasons are in Better Call Saul or even what's going on with Better Call Saul. Ended up seeing at least three, two to three seasons of it, and all of it's it's one of those that Better Call Saul is almost a standalone away from Breaking Bad. That's how good it is. That's what even El Camino itself is a standalone. I say standalone. You're gonna have to figure out for yourself how you'd like to watch watch it. Because honestly, like you you they they tell they tell so much of their own stories that if you if you like you're you're not you, you, you it sounds like either way you could be watched satisfaction or satisfied and satisfactorily or sat yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. can be satisfied watching them yeah honestly dude i watched it from breaking bad before they even came up with better call soul like better call soul came out like Right, well, yeah, yeah. far yeah. what which it is also a prequel, which it is actually it utilizes a lot of the original writers from Breaking Bad. And what's really fascinating about Breaking Bad in retrospect is that they literally did certain things without having the idea fully fleshed out, and then you got to see them. Oh wait, there was a continuity error, and because they do a lot of back and forth, like they do a lot of jump, you know, like flashbacks, and and the, the way that the story is laid out is it's kind of Quentin Tarantino style in certain regards where they just because it's it just because the series of events happened chronologically the chron chronological order doesn't matter here's the bits and pieces that make it to where now you get the entire story breaking bad better call Saul and and it, just that whole series even El Camino it's that whole series what they did an amazing job of is allowing you to be able to just step in and then you're drawn in. Getting a taste of it, you're going to want more. <laughs> Getting a taste of Breaking Bad, just just uh, having, if you watch Breaking Bad, you're going to want to watch. You're, it's, it's just, it happens. You're just going to want to watch Better Call Saul. You're just going to want to watch El Camino because you're like, what happens to these characters? This is such a good story. What happens? What happens next? What happens next? I've got to know. Oh, I see this at the end. What happened to those characters? What happened? So, yeah, man, just honestly. It's just like with uh, the original 1990s Berserk anime. The first episode is a, is a, is, is like the first episode of Berserk is a spoiler to the rest of the series or to the rest of the rest of that, of, of that part of the series. It's it's a taste. It's it's they give you the they, he gives you a he gives you a taste of it and then he gives you the beginning. I mean that's that's the the premise behind that one anime we watched with the or we haven't finished it. You're talking even, about with the, the guy the dragon yeah. the future and all that. Um. It's, it, I see what you're saying. It's different. Uh, it's it, uh. So basically, in the first episode of the, the 90s Berserk, you already see Guts as the Black Swordsman. He's already missing his eye. He's already missing his arm. Or he's missing his eye. He's missing his arm. Yeah, we got to see that. When he fights the big character snake. as this fucking... Three, three. 
Well, here's the thing about the thing As about the da- dragon destroyer that he can destroy anything with a simple like jest, you know. Okay. Um. So the difference there is that the black swordsman and berserk. That's not guts's. That's not guts's final form. So the first episode of Berserk, the '90s one, that's not his final form. I would it's, imagine that's not. Well, this, well, in yeah, in, the, in that anime, we're still watching it. Yeah, and in, in that anime, he already he already gained all this power. So I mean, one, we don't know if that's his final form. So the, the, here, it, it looks like the right, final let me, form. Hang on, let me let me explain. Let me explain. So it, as far as the form, hang on. All right, and Berserk. Disregard forms, and in, in, in that anime, disregard the form. His unlimited—he has all of his unlimited potential right there. It's just him becoming familiar with it. So, in Berserk, he doesn't even like in in that episode, in that first episode where he fights the the, the Baron, the the big snake monster, which is. That's the first episode, and then it goes to a flashback of getting to see Young Guts as a kid. In that first episode, he doesn't even have Berserk armor yet. He hasn't even like like. There's so much that has not happened. He doesn't have. He, yeah, with with that one, with that anime that you're talking about, all of that already happened, and the 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 the, the version that's already been there. He's like, hey, I went ahead and did it all. Here's the power. Take it and then and, and fix it, so you don't have to repeat what I did. I mean, he didn't. They didn't give him any power. It's already within him, just like the power was already within Berserk. Within guts, yeah. And I mean, this guy. It's a. He gets um. I guess he does have a special power within him. And then Berserk's more of like a, a just a badass human, huh? <laughs> That's on the surface level. I I don't know, like the so what's the what's, lore behind or manga behind Berserk. So know? so what what the 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 philosophical metaphysical the the meta meta philosophical I like that meta philosophical story of Berserk. Is because that, is is berserk fantasy or is it medieval? Medieval fantasy, yes. Okay, so there is magic and mm-hmm. whatnot. Mm-hmm. Now, with that, they do it from a they they do it medieval with a touch of fantasy, and to the point that fantasy takes over. Because, and that's that's the thing that that's how. What I love is that the way that Japanese authors have been doing things is that they are understanding the actual meaning and then they're just throwing on different mediums. They're throwing on different... They're, they're tapping into different genres to bring about that underlying truthful meaning. And it's they're just reskinning it. As a matter of fact, Star Wars is just a reskinning of the Bible. As a matter of fact, uh, Berserk is just a reskinning of the Bible. Uh, as a matter of fact, Deadpool is just a reskinning of the Bible. Marvel, all, all of those, all of that's just a reskinning of the Bible. And that's why they keep calling it the greatest story it's ever told. It's because. <laughs> it's it's one of those where you're disregarding where you're currently at in order to understand that all power lies within you. And so whatever and the thing is that that power that lies within you takes the form the infinite forms that is necessary to draw the power out of you to help you to realize the power has always been within you. And so that power within takes the form of an adversary. Which that adversary is just simply, it's just like, there is no adversary. 
It's literally just, hey, you're in the way of your own potential. Don't worry. I'm going to make sure you realize that potential. It's going to be uncomfortable for you at the time. It's going to feel uncomfortable because what that is, is that's you disregarding. And that's you being born again. That's you letting go of that old flesh. It's, it's uncomfortable. Like birth is uncomfortable. Birth is the most traumatic thing. That, that's the first most traumatic thing that happens. Being born. <laughs> you think about it. You're in, you're in, you're, you're in a nice, oh, this is my home. This is nice, beautiful comfort. Everything is literally provided for me. I don't even and know what my needs are. Out. And then you're yanked out. It's like, <laughs> it's like, what is this? But that's the thing is that. That's probably why every baby is just like screaming top of their lungs whenever they first yeah. come out. Because they're just peacefully there, mm -hmm. living their lives, la, la, la. And and that's the thing is like, <laughs> welcome to earth. <laughs> like, so earth. That, earth, welcome to earth. I love, I love playing earth. Oh, I didn't say it this time around. I did. I think I did. Just didn't say it as much. I was just like, welcome to earth. Like earth is just, <laughs> yeah. you know, ultra random, oh, ultra random fun. What is earth again? Ultra, ultra rapid fire, yeah. ultra random fun, like ultra rapid fire. Um, it is random fun. It is because it's one of those that like it doesn't make sense to get pissed off at an Earth game because it's like, you know what? Earth is only around for X amount of time. I'm just gonna have fun. Fuck it. I'm gonna get jump into another game. Let me choose another champion. Let me ban that champion. <laughs> have another yeah, like yeah, yeah. champions to ban Rangar. A good if 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 once someone plays as Rangar and once they get the feel of Rangar understanding. Or Rengar. Vigar is rough. Rengar is apparently like just more terrifying because you can literally just get into the bush over and over again. Is you, there's certain things you can do as Rengar where you just you're healed and you just burst and you're healed and burst. It Rengar is just disgusting. Like anytime you honestly just what look up Rengar on, on Earth. What about Shaco? Shaco Shaco's another one that I ban. Shake if there's an order of people to ban. Rengar is one that is highly like he's probably top tier. You should probably you should probably ban him for your own sake. Vagar he's on there, but not as intense as Shaco. Rengar and Shaco is in there. Vagar Vagar is in there somewhere, but Shaco is like Shaco is one that he's like oh god yeah like if 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 a good if a good Shaco player gets a hold of him, heaven help you. <laughs> like shit a good Zed player dude. Mm -hmm. Fuck. That shit. Actually, I went against a good Zed player, but with that, I was like, wait a minute, I already know, so I'm just gonna be mindful. Like, I know what to look out for. If you can, if you know what to look out for, then they're, then they're just, they don't, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's the thing. A good Zed player doesn't allow, give you the opportunity. If they're really good, they don't give you the opportunity to look out for shit because. Their shadow is on like a 0.5 second cooldown. So they just she triple, boom, 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 triple yeah. shadow and instant one shot you. If you let them. Like, if. Like 0.5 milliseconds, you, you're like. <laughs> so here's, here's what it comes down It doesn't matter how good they are, it comes down to how aware are you. <laughs> <laughs> If if you're aware, then that box train ain't gonna hit you. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like you don't want me to blink through a whole thirty minute game. That's pretty much what you want me to do. Or blink at the right times. <laughs> I blink once and I'm dead. <laughs> like one yes. si one simple blink, one like one small close of the eyes, you're dead. If you put yourself in that situation. Exactly. You don't want me to blink. No, maybe. No, it's it's one of those. That, okay, what? How about this? Instead of assuming what I want for you, how about you know what you want? You want you don't want to get beat by this dude. Okay. So. For your own sake, you know what to look out for. <laughs> like that's that's it's it's it's. 
I mean, he's he, the only reason that he's more lethal is just because of the fact that it's at a faster pace. As a matter of fact, me when I was playing when I play as Nar and Earth, oh dude, I get S's easy all day every day because oh, now yeah, it's, whenever I play Lau, yeah, just smash. Because you, you have the little limiters that are taken off of you. The skill is you that same skill is always there. You're always that skillful. It's just there's less limiters now. Now you don't have the cooldown that gets in the way. And that's what's fun is like at that point, honestly, Earth is a good way to warm yourself up and familiarize familiarize yourself with your champ even more so. Because now you're like, wait a minute, I can destroy with this. Okay, now let's take it into a normal game. Let's let's bring the pacing back down. And it's like, where's my skill? Like I've seen myself without limits. Now, how do I bring it out here? It's, they got some. It's fun to just like grab someone with the spear like five times in a row. Oh, with the, what you said, spear. Are you talking pike or are you talking like spear? Oh, like, the spear. Grab, spear. Grab their spear. Grab their spear. Find, yeah, yeah, that's always good. No mana is once always great too. That's. One of my favorite things to do in Earth. I mean, Nar does not have mana. I know. I, I was. I was about. I didn't finish my statement. One of my favorite things to do with Earth is play as champions that have mana, because then I'm not worried about mana. <laughs> like, you know, because then it's like, okay, let me really see what this character is about. That's how I, I enjoy playing Zerath in Earth, so that I can take him into normal games and know what to do with him. I, I like, like yeah. I like playing Karma. I'm I'm pretty decent with Karma and I'm her still, abilities. I'm still confused at what Karma does and who's the who's the Yeah, what is Karma's shield? Udir, right? Or it used to be Udir, but it's not uh, uh um they reworked him. Yeah. No car I get karma and who's the chick that like like she she can play as she's she like Teleports, but she leaves a clone. Teleports, but leaves a clone. She's like the female Shaco, but she's not a clown. She's not like a box clown. She. Are you. Hmm. You talking about the one that can turn into a minion? No. Not, not the chameleon chick. Not the lizard chick. Not Nico. I'm talking about, um,. She's like some type of a magician chick. She's like she she does something where she can like leave a tether. She can you can be chasing her and then she'll like you you'll think it's her and then she'll teleport somewhere else or she'll teleport back where she was. Not echo teleporting, but I mean like she can literally be like I'm here. Oh, let me teleport. And then like leave behind like a like she she has other she can do that clones. Sounds like a brand new. Champion. No, it's an old ass champion. Fucking a. Hold on. Who does that? What ability is that? I'm so confused. I... Okay. Mm. And she goes back to it. She leaves the clones. Only person I think of is Yone. But that's not a female. LeBlanc. LeBlanc, wow. Fuck. Wow. Okay. I can't believe I didn't think about LeBlanc. That's I didn't, so descri I didn't describe her in, in well, well, now I guess it is obvious, though. So. I guess I did describe, I could have described her in ways that would have brought it to your no, attention. I should have knew. I'm not going to tell you that you're, you're right on that one. If I agree with you or not, I'm not going to tell you that you should have known. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see here. What, what, okay. LeBlanc and Karma. Those are like for so Karma does shields, right? LeBlanc, LeBlanc's a burst. Yeah, she because they utilize electrocute. So mirror image. When Le, uh, this is her passive. When LeBlanc drops below forty percent HP, she becomes invisible for one second and creates a harmless clone for eight seconds. LeBlanc can move the clone with the Alt key. That's awesome. That's something you could plan for and use. That's cool as so I'll get out. All right, and then you've got... Karma uses alt a lot, by the way. Her alt, alt button? Alt, yes, the alt button. Not her alt. 
Oh, she uses her alt a lot, but I'm just saying yeah. alt, the alt key. Yeah. A O T. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's the default self cast button, but that's my self cast button. Yeah, it is. Yeah, pretty much. That is that's that's the main one. Control does it's a, it's control does a different type of casting, and then Alt and any of the buttons is the self casting. You're right. All right, LeBlanc. All right, so Q, Sigil of Malice. Let's see, Distortion, Ethereal Chains, and Mimic. That's cool. I didn't. I'm not. Uh... Do a whole lot of playing of LeBlanc either. I haven't played as her yet. I, I think I, she's one that I'm waiting for in an ARAM so that I can like, okay, how do I play this champion? At least, at least get it, get, I enjoy ARAMs for the fact that I get to see all different types of characters and I can't like, you know, the more familiar with characters I become, then when I go into a normal game, I'm already. I already know. Oh, this guy does this type of damage, and he's gonna do that. Okay, well, I can keep my distance now. I can now. I can just play safe. Like with Earth, I was playing with my friend Mikey, and I was playing against Zed, and I was playing as some other character that I don't. I, I think I was playing as Milo, Milio, Milio. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you called him Milo. Milo's one of my favorite names. My dog Milo, as a matter of fact. So Milo, he's actually one of my favorite characters. He's he's just a healing kid. It's it's like yeah, that's good vibe. Good good kid. I beat the shit out of that Zed as a healer That's in good. mid lane and earth. I mean, he did nothing but healing. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Q was fun too because he would try and attack. You just throw your Q out and just bounce him away. It's like, ha! <laughs> and then you just throw your shield on and then you throw your healing on and all that stuff. So it was one of those that I was it's like, oh, dude, Zed mid? That's terrifying. I'm like, to who? You? Okay, pussy. <laughs> like... Zed mid, okay, like Zed and Earth. Yeah. Yeah, there's counters to everybody. Well that's the thing, is like if you understand how to not how to but, how to play against the Earth's, counter. Earth's uh Earth is I don't think um if I mean if you if you want to choose a counter, that's that's up to you, but I, I I don't play Earth to counter. Well, I didn't do I that either. Earth, I, was, I play Earth to have fun. That's how I. I that's honestly uh, any game should be is play the game to have fun. I remember. I will pick a champion to counter someone in rank, though. Yeah, and with that, that person, if they're any better than you, they're going to know how to play against that counter pick, or. What you do is that the counter pick is not a counter pick. It's like okay, that lets me know. I mean, there's reasons they call it a counter. I pick, know, and I'm, so. I'm and what I'm explaining is that I love gamers, and I myself have been a gamer my entire life. And frankly, doesn't mean you can't get around the counter, but that's, the counter that's is what still I prefer. there. It's it's that's it I mean, just makes it more challenging for the other individual. To me. Claiming someone as a counter pick creates a an invisible barrier, and it creates limiting beliefs. And that's it's it's terminology that I feel there's better terminology that can be utilized to express that view, but in a way that is conducive with not being terrified of a counter pick. That's one thing that. Honestly, I mean, I'm, no I'm, one has to be terrified of the counter. It's, it's, you're right. No, it's just yeah. it's just more challenging to play against. It's only as challenging as you let it be, and that's the thing. Is like, and again, it's that's limiting. If if to call something a counter pick is giving it difficulty that may or may not be there. It's it's there for somebody. It can be there for you. However, it's one of those that if you understand that, okay. I mean, that's like saying. Reframing it from calling it a counter pick to, hey, this is something you, like, that is beneficial for you to play. Play. You have to. It's one of those. Using a diff. If you play against this type of person, 
that means use a different play style. That doesn't mean they're your counterpick. That just means use a different play style. That's it. Fuck counterpicks. Doesn't make that doesn't exist to me. If someone claims it to be a counterpick, that's just oh that person just means oh hey, be mindful that other play styles are very beneficial here. Good to know. What's counterpick? That that doesn't exist to me. Nothing can counter me. But me exactly. I know. I know what you mean and what you desire, and that's why. That's why I don't get in voice chats. That's why I don't get in voice chats with friends when I play league because their own bitching. Because I love my friends and and I I value what friends have to say. If you're bitching, I just have to shut you off because I don't like bitching. I I don't I don't associate with bitching anymore. I don't associate. I've never. I don't associate with bitching. I'm I'm not the type of person that allows I mean, for, myself to associate you, with bitching anymore. It's easier to It takes time. It becomes to easier. Not to not be around it than to block it out of your mental state. You Here's know. the thing is if you're blocking block is resistance. Why would I want to keep resisting? At that point, what happens is... I mean, it's I on rather, you to resist. It's on you to it's acknowledge on you to block it. If you have to. So, what I what I do is I choose to make it easier on myself. Who says you have to? As I'm explaining, is what I do is I enjoy making it easier on myself. Exactly. To recenter myself so that when I'm around friends and that's, if they that's start... That's what I, I was simply saying. Yeah. You, Rather than to block it, you go the easier route. Path of and, least resistance. And, and I get the results that I desire out of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way to do it. I mean, and everyone can do that. That's that's the part that I'm putting out there is that I everyone mean, that, has that ability the and that can free will. Will. What? So. Free will, hang on, how would I like to put this? Because this is, because that's, the way, what I express whenever I'm saying things, it's not to ever make someone feel that they do not have free will. It's to help them understand how you are using your free will it could either be beneficial for you or against you. And everyone has been doing it unknowingly their entire way. We all have. Where we figure out for ourselves what works best. And what happens is, thankfully, and it's now that I finally I mean, get it. Why can't, why can't people be satisfied with that? Why can't people be happy with that? What What is so wrong with their path of life that they can't enjoy themselves? So, it's not, I'm not saying any of that. It's, it's not, that. none of that is implied to not. What I'm explaining is like, hey, I have taken a path. I have taken that path. I've seen those paths. And what I've been able to glean. You're not living their life. Let me explain. I didn't imply that I was. You said you experienced it. I've experienced points of view. I've experienced life. I've experienced different points of view. I've, I've, I've been you there in different ways. You experienced their life. That's not what's important. It is if that's what you're no, talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. Le- okay, let me. I'm, 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 I'm fixing it so it comes out, out better then. Okay. I'm simply sharing the tools. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing the understanding 
of how to use these tools that we have been given. Because I have taken the face value that we've all been given, and I've played with that, I now see the error of those ways. When you take the face value, okay, been there, done that. Not going there anymore. What I do now for me is, okay, now that I understand the face value is not exactly how things should be taken, now that I'm coming at things with an understanding, it's like, okay, what's the best way to express that to others so that they can launch off from where they're at now and have all that we you know, everything that like we, we've, we've all been looking for and longing for. What's the best way that I can express information to someone so that they don't automatically get offended? It's like, first of all, why are you, why are you choosing offense? Why are you so married to that way? Do you have to have it that way? Does it have to be that way? It doesn't have to be that way, but if then someone, why, why is, put the emotional someone is there? satisfied with the way they're doing things, why do they need to change? Never if, said... if they're happy with the way they are living their lives, then they can live how they want to, you know? That's correct. And the thing is that those people do go about living their lives. Now... And they, they live it the way that they, they live it. And it's beautiful. What I what I express is that, hey, remember those English teachers? And you might not have had these English teachers. I'm explaining from for for the people that have ever been corrected in their speech. And explaining what that correction means and why 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 they corrected, why why it is useful, why it is why I'm explaining the why. For you to do with it as you choose. And what happens is, you'll figure it out on your own. I had to. Everyone does. At that point, that's there's the beauty. Have fun with that. What I'm explaining is that the way that we have been conditioned, the way that we have been taught, the way we have been programmed by society, if you're looking for, whatever you're looking for, Regardless of what you're programming, whatever you're looking for, you will find. That is that is the important fact. That is the one true fact. Whatever you're looking for, you're going to find it. If you stay persistent in it, you shall find it. That said, a statement opens the mind, whereas a question, a statement closes the mind, whereas a question opens it. And so if you feel like you're stuck in one area, well... Ask, start asking questions instead of putting down statements. If you'd like to excel somewhere, are your statements helping you or are they holding you? Are they hindering you? At that point, asking a question might help you to get past where you've been. If there's a statement that you keep putting out there, you're saying, I, 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 this. You keep saying that. And I keep catching on to what you're saying and you're expressing that you desire this. It's like, well, it might help that you start changing how you speak because how you speak is what's going to affect how you think. It's going to affect the thoughts that go through your head. You do you. You're going to, obviously. That said, <laughs> if you'd like a better way Maybe a question might be helpful for you to ask. Maybe what I have to say might be helpful. Maybe speaking in an open with open-minded questions for yourself might be beneficial. Maybe you might maybe it might come to you easier that way if you're open-minded to it. If you're using your eyes, if you're if you're allowing your identity to receive. If you're if you're one who identifies as being open-minded and accepting to receive, then at that point, you're not going to waste your emotions if someone brings to you information that is only supposed to be neutral information. 
So it becomes easier. Every day, every day it becomes easier. I'm not saying, it's not to say that, you know, you don't have to break some eggs to get an omelet. It's implied. When I say it becomes easier, that means, that's not saying that it's always easy. That's not saying that hardships don't happen. That's not saying that there's going to be woes. What I'm explaining is that it becomes easier when you shift your focus. Then what seemed, what something that used to cause so much emotional distress in your life isn't going to do that anymore because now you're looking at it like, wait a minute, that's okay. That was where I was. That was a pit stop. That's not a pitfall. I'm not stuck there. That's just a pit stop. I can stop there, let it go and move on instead of being stuck in the pitfall and then putting out statements that close my mind or asking questions that only lead to more, like asking questions that lead to like, certain questions are going to give you certain answers. Ask the right questions, you're going to receive the right answers. Keep asking the questions that, that lead to answers that aren't helpful, you're going to keep getting those kinds of answers. It's just simply explaining like literally... <laughs> Just, just how the mind works, how you're like, I've studied my own mind for all these years because that's all I've had to study and then getting to see others and getting to see them from different perspectives. I, everyone gets to come up with their own judgment of things and their own interpretation and understanding. Everyone's going to come to their own understanding. So going about life in not a judgmental way but in a way that is meant to, okay, how am I supposed to grow? What is, what is life? What is love? You start to receive more and more of those things. When you are open to different ways, then you are able to understand something wholeheartedly. One of my favorite things to do in games with characters is build them out in a way that's completely opposite of how they're built so that I might understand the character better. Or I might be able to be like, Oh, that's why this character is only like, that's why these stats are, Oh, you know, Ugh. it's, it's literally limit testing. I've limit to, I've been limit testing myself my entire life. And I can tell you that Asking yourself or asking different questions is better and is more beneficial, it's helpful, than using closed-minded statements that do not allow you to grow. And at that point, once you find statements that are actually true to who you are, then stay true to those statements of who you are. At that point, what does it mean to be what you say you are? So, yeah, he's in. Definitely got to be in. It helps. Ain't got to. You're gonna be. <laughs> it happens. The like. If you, if you are being over extravagant in a way that is like boasting and, and whatnot, you're going to be humbled. Now, if you are joyful in a way that allows for everybody to feel that joy. What's the difference between joyful and wonderful? Hmm. Hmm. It's a good question. I like that. Let's look into that. I like that. I like that. That's, now, now you're asking fun questions. <laughs> fun questions. Because the because now it actually opens opens up to to like okay well that is a good question. Let's let you know now. Oh, we're talking about etymology. Wonder. You said joyful versus wonderful. Yes, sir. Well, wonderful would be full full of wonder of some sort. So let's define the word wonder, because. Wonderfully, wonder plus fool, which etymology of fool, if you will, actually, here we go. Word forming element attached to nouns and in modern English to verb stems and meaning full of having characterized by 
Also, amount or volume contained. You know, like a handful or a bellyful. So, the word wonder, Old English, wonder, marvelous thing, mir miracle, object of astonishment. From Proto-Germanic, wunder wunderdran. Wunderbar. W-U-N-D-R-A-N. Wundran. 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 <laughs> Source also of Old Saxon, Wundar, which the two, a W makes the sound of like V, like two V, two V's together makes a W. Like there's a movie that came out called Vich, which it was two V's and then I T C H. Like that's V's and double, a W is just two V's. Like it's just, it's interesting. Like, oh man, they did so much with, anyway. Oh, which, maybe a sidetrack, but. Mm -hmm. Um, what is Wunderbar from? Wunderbar. That's, that's literally, that's just someone whimsically saying wonderful. Okay, and yeah. Okay. So even, even check this out. So Old Saxon, W, uh, Wundar, W-U-N-D-A-R, which that, it, it'd be pronounced Wundar, Wundar. Wundar. Middle Dutch and Dutch is Wonder, W-O-N-D-R. So Wonder, yeah, there you go, Wundar. Old High German, Wuntar, W-U-N-T-A-R. Notice how the D and the T are swapped out? Even with Wonder and then Wunder, the U and the O are swapped out. And then German, Wunder, and Old Norse, Wunder. U-N-D-R. Wunder, like Udir, almost, yeah. but with the D and the R swapped out. So under, Wunder. So that even, that even has... <laughs> Which apparently Old Norse is of un, un, unknown origin. <laughs> In Middle English, it also came to mean the emotion associated with such a sight. Mm. To be no wonder was in English. The original wonder drug was sulfonilamide, something like that. Anyways, so wonder is literally just, it's almost can be a state of awe. Uh, it can be like, you know, like a marvelous thing. Yeah, literally marvelous thing. A state of awe, a state of awe, you know? So now joy. Well, actually, that's one of the things too, Ham. One second. There's a little more probably. Blunderful. Blunderful. A, uh, jocular blend of blunder and wonderful. <laughs> Blunderful. That's fun. Uh, so other others are reading. So another similarity to or a, a simile to wonder would be um, fantastic, exciting only in imagination, produced by mental fantasy, <laughs> produced by fantasy. Yeah. So okay. So now joy. I'd say wonder and marvel are actually not really good ones. Okay. So joy, feeling of pleasure and delight, source of pleasure or happiness. Uh, from old French. Uh, J O I E, which is pleasure, delight, erotic pleasure, bliss, joyfulness. From Latin, uh, G A U D I A, which is uh, gaudia, gaudia. Expressions of pleasure, sensual delight, plural of uh, gaudium, joy, inward, inward joy, gladness, delight, source of pleasure or delight. Uh, from uh, Gaudier, which is a uh, interesting, almost almost like gaudy. Uh, rejoice from uh, anytime you see capital P I E, and you see the word root afterwards, it's uh, you know literally the word pie with root. Anytime it has to do with linguistics, it's Proto Indo European P I E, Proto Indo European, which is like like you know before Europe and yada yada. It's like it's like the root, 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 root of words. Kind right. of deal. Kind of deal like that. Which comes from G A U like Ga, which is to rejoice. And then uh yeah. Yeah. So joy is joy is like uh it's 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 one of those where it's like it's it's the it's 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 literally that like ah, like everyone has felt joy. It's 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 one of those that joy joy is joy is what creates happiness. 
Happiness, joy is eternal. Joy is something you can always be joyful. You can, always can. Happiness has to do with having a happening. Hence the word hap. Happenstance. Happened. Happening. It, it implies that there has to be something there in order for me to be happy. Whereas joy doesn't have to have anything. It's just, it is a, it is a permanent state that is allowed to be. It's, as a matter, it's a fruit of the spirit. As a matter of fact. Whereas even happiness is too. However, happiness is less than joy. Joy is greater than. Happiness is, is expressed from, from joy. From a happening of being joyful. If something good happens and you are in a receptive state of it, you're happy. Whereas if something good happens and you are not a happy person, you might not necessarily perceive it as happiness. Or you might not even, if, if you don't have joy within you, you're not going to be happy when it happens. Whatever, whatever, whatever makes you joyful happens. That's whenever the happiness comes out. So in order for you to ever be happy, you've got to be able to be joyful. In order for you to receive happiness, which is a happening mm -hmm. of joy being mm -hmm. brought to, you've got to be joyful. You've got to be, you have to be receptive to, you have to be the type of person that is joyful in order for joyful things to happen. You've got to be the type of person that is open to being happy in order to receive happiness. You've got to be a loving person. You've got to be receptive to love in order to receive love. You receive what you are. Whenever you allow the flow of what you are to be, then whatever you are flows to you. But if you're resisting, you're stopping the flow of it. That's when you're damning something, you're stopping the flow of it. If your dams can open, that is correct. As to, and and that's so that's whenever you're a, a dam, dam and curse. If you're lifting a curse, if you're removing the dam, if you're getting, if you're I mean, opening the dam, dam, can be open and still stay in position. That's a physical dam, yes. Whereas blessing and cursing, I mean, physical or mental dams can still stay. That's true. Curses can be removed. I mean, no one has to be cursed with the I dam. I know. What I'm explaining is that the literally. The, the, the literary term, here, let's go to the word damn. Since you keep bringing up this damn word. I mean, you just brought it up. So. I know, but I mean, like, you're the one that got fixated on it. I was ready to move on to something else, but we're here we are now, we're on damn. All right, so. Uh, I brought it up because you brought it up. I know, you you kept going on it, and so we're, we're going to keep going with it. it this, this The reason I brought it up was because you had, it, it seemed like a word that was becoming a block to me expressing certain things in the past, past conversations. So that's why I brought it up so that we can nip that shit in the bud. So, damn. It comes from Latin, which, uh, ha uh, damnum, which is damage, hurt, harm, loss, injury, a fine penalty, which then it became damner, which is, uh, to, and judge guilt to doom to condemn blame reject then it went into then it evolved into damner which is old french of damn condemn convict blame injure which then that ended up going into which is this this goes from old french into 13th century which would be what the year is 1400 is that how the centuries work yeah in the 1400s which is 13th century Middle English, dampen, dampen, damen, damen, to condemn, declare guilty, convict, doom to punishment in a future state. And then it evolved into just simply the verb of the word damn. Now, let's go to, come on. So there's verb of it, and then there's a there's other ways of doing it. Now that's here we go. The noun is recorded from sixteen tens of utterance of the word "dam." To be not worth a dam is from eighteen seventeen. To not give to not give or care a dam is by seventeen sixty. 
The adjective in 1775, short of damned, or short for damned. Damn Yankee, damned Yankee. Characteristic Southern U.S. term for northerner is attested by 1812 as damned, related to damning. So now to go, that was the, there's all the answer, the fancy history. So yeah, and actually even this is just, that was, yeah, it literally was all the exact same information. So the word damn has centuries of, of people, of, 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 your own DNI, D DNI, your own, your own DNA and the society around us associates that word and gives power to that word as a word of, uh, to, uh, of, of doom, condemning, blame, reject, hurt, loss, injure, fine, penalty. Uh, let's see here. It's one of those where, like, that's that's a bit of that's a verbal, you know, dam literally dams stop the flow of water. It stops the flow. That's that's what that is. Now that's the power that we all have: blessing and cursing. So blessing and damning, allowing the flow and stopping the flow. We all have that power. I urge you to choose life. You yeah, you can you can curse all you want. You ain't gonna wanna. As far as with that, using different words. Allowing the flow of, of positivity and allowing the the flow of what you do desire. If anything, you can allow, actually, even what was it? Technically, Christ could have said, well, damn you, fig tree. He cursed it. He stopped the flow of life to it, and it stopped. That's If anything, it lets you know how I mean, powerful. That's why they changed how dams work. What are they doing dams now? Like, I mean, it's not only... Stopping the flow. It allows flow to happen. If anything, to dam something is to redirect the flow and to actually convert the, the energy from blessing to whatever. So, hydroelectric dams, for example. And that's something that would be considered good. And it's a dam at the same time. So, oh, isn't that a, uh, I, I, okay. So, hydroelectric dam, what they do is they, they take the rushing water, the water, which is already, it's, it's mo movement, it's, it's already energy in movement. What they're doing is they're catching it, and then they're having that, all that movement, it's converted into another form of energy. So, you can transmute energy into other energy that's just the literal physical version of it that we get to see since we're always surrounded by the unseen your own power of your subconscious mind your own power of your own breath the power of of life with inside of everybody else the things that animate the stuff that we don't understand or don't understand that you don't see or whatever the unseen forces that people always or more, uh, you know like literally we, we got to see a Hollywood actor saying why is it working I don't you know it's like, okay this is this is the how this is the why is redirecting our energy it's just like if someone was working on a problem and they're working on coming up to a solution to it what usually happens is by they come up to that solution by putting so much time and effort and then either they fall asleep and the answer comes to them or they just stop and they're like, you know what? I'm just going to oh, oh. come with and then And then the answer, it's what resist persists. So if you're resisting the ability to have an answer, then you're going to persist and you're going to persist in that. You're going to consistently not be able to receive that answer until you change what you believe of yourself to be true that you can receive the answer that the answer can come to you once you start speaking it that way then it comes to you easier then it allows you that that opens the dam that opens the dam if anything you know oh like people saying that we, you know, we were born with a curse well the curse was us not understanding fully 
the power of our own breath. And with that, when things happen, if we're speaking it about it from a way of not understanding, then we're perpetuating it. If there's death, we are to speak life instead. And if there's if anyone curses you, bless them. You say the things that are not as though they were, so that those things can change. That's the thing. You're going to utilize different vocabulary, different words. You're going to have different habits that are conducive with who you truly are. If you're someone who actually is is working to grow, then you're going to be given every opportunity to grow every day. We, we're always growing. It's just whether or not you're growing into who you really choose to be or you're growing stagnant. Your choice. Using different things to help yourself out to not be stagnant is very beneficial. The ways to not be stagnant is to renew your mind, is to, to renew what you say about yourself, to rethink scenarios and situations like, well, how could I be blessed in this scenario? How could that scenario work out? Or is this something that is really worth my time? Should I get upset about this? How should I act instead? How do I, how would I rather feel? How would I rather act? You start asking types of questions like that, then it removes all of the emotional burden of the old ways. Then you're not sitting there being that same person that was like struggling so hard. If once you stop struggling, then a solution will come to you easier. It, it, it'll just flow to you or you're just going to be more relaxed. And then at that point, it's literally the, the small, still voice. It, it literally, then it comes to you. You're like, aha. <laughs> it happens. It happens all the time. Like it's, it's one of those where, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it for yourself. You might not have realized it. I know for me, there's plenty of times it didn't come to my realization until it's like, wait a minute. Oh, that retrospective is very helpful. Whereas with that retrospect, I don't know what's being more retrospective. Ret, ret, uh, retrospective is like in retrospect, like in, in hindsight, and like you know, now that it's all said and done, looking back, that's retrospect. And that's okay. hindsight. Yeah. yeah, retrospect actually retrograde retrospect. Retrospect is like switching the the perspective back or switching playing it back in order to create a new re like find it find the better perspective that's retrospect i feel like that's that's right actually that's a fun one i had to look that up retrospect ah a regard or reference to something from latin latin which is retrospectum spe, uh, retrospect spectrum uh, retrospectrum which uh past participle of uh Retrospectier, uh, look back from retro, which is back to specier, is look at. So back, look at from the Proto-Indo-European root of spec, this is to observe, meaning survey of past events. So in retrospect. See retro is backwards behind from Latin retro is prep. And to observe and a uh, backwards perspective behind perspective a looking back perspective hmm. okay so what you can do is at the end of the day review your day not not without any not with judgment why me i'm saying anyone this is oh, this, again this this is one of those that like I'm, this, this is the collective you because you like trolling and not letting me know if that's even recording or not. So I'm just going to keep talking as if I'm talking to whoever. Because, yeah. Shit, I'll talk, I'll talk as if it's, uh, if it's a message that would have been beneficial for me had I heard it years ago or had I thought of it from another perspective. I'll just speak of it that way. So That's what I thought you were doing this whole time. It's just 
Well, that's we're just having conversation. Yeah, we are. So one of our use the you. I think you're talking to me. No. <laughs> no. Uh, it was. It was. Fun. I remember. I remember back when I was in fifth grade, and we had just gone over all sorts of English and reading and more English and 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 it was one of those where it's like okay getting to understand how speaking works it's like okay start to figure this out so it's it's one of those that <sighs> definitely uh definitely helps definitely uh it's a good refresher I'm, I'm glad I've been I've been actually looking over language again and uh and being mindful of what my my brain what what thoughts and what beliefs i've had and and how they've been beneficial or how they have not and letting go of the old old limiting memories old limiting beliefs or old beliefs of what i think what i what i think i remember and instead looking and finding perspectives of like oh okay that's how this 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 oh okay oh yeah oh well, i'm still here so Obviously, there's something more to it all. Then it's like, hmm. So, or even with that, I mean, that's what I think all the time too. That's good. That's that's conducive to actually existing uh, coherently in a in a peaceful way. So that's good. It's really good. Yeah. I mean, I already know the reason. So. Yeah, you do. You, of course. Yeah. Um, one of the, one of the things that, uh, when you, for me, have, like, anytime watching different movies, uh, of, of seeing, like, uh, some, like, you know, oh, the Vikings making it through, or, or, like, or, oh, these medieval guys making it through, or, oh, these soldiers, or, you know, any, 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 whatever, whatever scenario, and then looking at it from that perspective, and then knowing that I'm watching the movie, but these guys are in the middle of the storm, and, and of course they're actors in a movie. But you know, they they're characters. Looking at it from a from the story perspective versus the oh, that's just this actor in this, you know, like disregarding that, letting that shit go, and looking at it from a, a narrative story perspective, and getting to see this is what they've been talking about. This is what the ancients. This is what. All of the this this is why this is why our system is set up the way that it is. It's this is why everything that the the you know the Vikings the the European the the the, the Latins uh, the uh, like uh, the, the, every every society has has struggled to get to this point in this pinnacle in time in order for us to understand that. It's always been just because you're alive, you can do anything. It's, it's, it's having that faith that literally the fact that our bodies move, that in and of itself is faith in action. Because you believe that you can move, you're right. You just got to wiggle that big toe. Wiggle your big toe. And that's the fun part. I remember as a kid watching that and thinking, like, it, and, and that came out in 2001. I was about, I, I was 11. It doesn't, that was, yeah, around September time, maybe July. I remember watching it with my parents, and I'm just like, and 11 year old me, innocent and very loving, and, and having grown up with the perspective of, of say it so it shall be, like, of, of that faith part. It, it was foreign to me where she's saying, well, you're a big toe. And I'm like, what? And then it, it, because it uses all of these secular, worldly, that's what secular means is worldly, like these other world perspectives. And it's like, but I only know the, the, the Bible perspective uh, of, of what my, how my parents and my mom and my dad, are, you know, and everyone, da, 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 and all that. And it's like, well, you're a big toe. So what? And then you learn about, Eastern da, 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 philosophies, and you learn all these, then you learn, and then, and with all that, it's like, okay, mind over matter. And it's like, oh, okay. It's like, yeah, how does scripture put it? And it's like, does it line up with scripture? And then 
learning about Sanskrit and then at that point learning about how India, India, Hindu, and how all of, none of that was ever meant to be a religion and then even how the Bible comes from Sanskrit and how even my, what, how I was raised in the house is that it's not a religion because it's not, it's literally your own relationship with the source of life within you. That's all any of it's ever been about. The wiggle your big toe resonates even more because what happened is because she had been laying in a hospital bed and because everybody else had been speaking certain things, her subconscious mind, and because her conscious mind took the bullet and was holding on to what, what Bill did and all of that for X amount of time, that she was in a coma for X amount of years. And when she came to, she was still the same person that whole time. Her body had to get reformatted or her brain had to re be reformatted to where her body listened. So she had to say, wiggle your big toe, wiggle your big toe, wiggle your big toe, wiggle your big toe. Eight hours later. No, was it? It might've been 12 hours. It was a long, it was a long ass time later. You see her get up and walk out. Then after, after that one toe wiggles, after she thinks of Oran Ishii, now let's get all the other piglies wiggling. Then you see her eight hours later stand up and start walking. And it's one of those that even, that, that's biblical. Christ said, Dis disregard your mat. Rise. Get up. Walk with me. I like that she stole a truck and it was a hilarious, hilarious truck. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, the pussy day. <laughs> the pussy wagon. I wonder how many... Uh, oh, people uh, love that after that. Uh, that was, fans that was one of, those... of the movie like made a replica truck like it. Oh man, what's great is actually uh, Quentin Tarantino actually owns the pussy wagon. Like he he ended up actually like I, I ended up watching an interview uh, a few like years later from after that, and he's like, oh yeah, I owned it, yeah, I owned it, and, da -da -da. and I was like, that's cool, and because it's one of those that he wrote the whole like there's like anyone that would sit there and be like, oh that's, you know, sexism and all that's like shut up, you're, you're, that's that's like you know, cooties, like anyone that goes about things obsessed with genitalia like that, it's like, dude, you have an elementary understanding if you're going to sit there and keep talking about genders, like, and you're going to keep holding on to something. It's like, look at the power. Like, literally, the way that Tarantino wrote this story, he, he came up with a story during Reservoir Dogs. And, 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 and actually in tandem with Uma Thurman, the, 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 you know, Beatrix Kiddo of Kill Bill, you know, of, of the bride. And they worked together and put heart and soul into that. And it's a fascinating story. It's a beautiful story. It's a, it's a story of redemption, of, of, of self-realization. And, and it's absolutely a, an incredible story. And to sit there and, and to get snagged on like, oh, they said this. And it's like, you missed the point. <laughs> so, <sighs> it's beneficial to, to revisit certain things from a different point of view so that you can allow the release of the old point of view. So you can let go of that old view of, of whatever, old views that w might have been hampering and stopping actual growth and stopping actual unity. You can you can release divisive, like like you know, division. You can release division and allow for for growth, multiplication and and, and unity. Yeah. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, because there was a lot of scrutiny that when I went around, went around whenever Kill Bill came out, you know, or Quentin Tarantino. And, and like, he's, he's, he's been one that he's, as far as, like, dealing with critics, the type, for him, the type of person that he is, it made sense why he had attracted the certain critics that he did. And the type of person that he is, it makes sense how he was able to put those critics down. <laughs> There was a, there was one interview, um, even uh, Robert Downey Jr. did this one interview, and he just put this one critic down 
that because a critic tried to bring up some old bull, like some old bullshit nonsense, and it's like, it's like, like what are you, what are you doing here? What are you, like what's this interview? And it it is it it's like dude, it's like fascinating. It's like whew, man, that's what I'm talking about. So. Oh yeah, it seems like a lot of actors are huge fans of Quentin Tarantino. Oh yeah, because it's one of those that he understands it, and he it's and it's it's one of those where like all the the actors that get into it. I mean, look at look at the the act that he's gotten some huge actors in there. Some of the like literally like a, a, a lot of amazing actors oh, yeah. in his films. And it's because what happens is he allows for the story to be. He he allows for creation and he allows for the flow. If you're... Closed-minded to how a story should be told, then you're not going to be able to tell your own story. If you're if you are so hard set on certain formats, then you're not going to be able to to allow for real creation. And what's really awesome about scripture, really, is that it explains how you can have that actual freedom of expression. And what what happens is. For me, what I what I what I've actually been able like what I what I've now that I'm actually back in it again fully wholeheartedly under you know now to the point where I understand is okay now let me really understand let as in allow for the full understanding that is already there but allow more of it because we are all com completion is already complete everything that has existed already has been already whatever exists it exists eternally right now and the way we access that is by persisting in, staying in that state, visualizing, feeling it, being it wholeheartedly, completely letting go of what limiting, what limits might be now and just disregarding those and being like, you know what, some way, somehow this could happen. And with that, new speech patterns or better speech patterns or more beneficial speech patterns or speech patterns that match what my goals are. So if anything, your speech patterns should match your goal of who you truly are. And there are certain, there's, there are questions that are beneficial and questions that will snag. At that point, if you ask the right questions, you're going to receive more answers. You're going to receive useful answers. Whereas if you ask certain questions a certain way, you might limit yourself. I'm, express, I'm expressing from literally <sighs> understanding that has come from within, as everyone has understanding that comes from within. I'm expressing how there are patterns that can be beneficial. What was your thoughts on Death Proof? I seen that at a young age. I enjoyed it. Death Proof, the 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 one with Jason Statham. Or yeah. no, that was no no that was that was oh good lord. That's that Death Race, I think. Yeah, Death Race that was. I hadn't gotten to see Death Proof yet. That's the one. That's the one where he ended up doing. He made movies. He made a uh, a bunch of short films, which he didn't necessarily count Death Proof as a full film. Um, because I believe Quentin said he was only going to make eight full-length feature films. Where I, or he was only going to direct. Let me retract that. But, uh, I'm not not quoting him. <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of those that I know I know that he said something along... Hang on. Good lord. I can use better words than that. <laughs> words that better express that. Um... It's an hour 27 minute film. Did he co-direct on that one? Uh, let's see. Because I know he, he co-directed another Django film, which it was not Django. It's funny, he actually made, he was a part of this Django film before he actually 
uh, made Django Unchained. It's filmed, written, and, and directed by Quentin Tarantino. Ah, so that is one of his. Okay, so that's one that needs to be seen on my part. Um, was that was that one that was that was one that was a uh, it came out oh it was a double feature that's what it was he did a double feature with Robert Rodriguez which was Machete that's what it was it was Machete Machete and yeah. Machete and and Death Proof came out together feature film I ended up seeing Machete hadn't seen Death Proof just yet I seen Machete too yeah. Wait, the, the sequel, Machete 2, or you saw Machete also? Also. Yeah. See, isn't it, it you see how right there, like, our own, like, you know, 2 and 2, it's like, good lord, that's such a pain in the ass. It's like, mm -hmm. man, maybe there's a meaning to that, you know? That's the fun part, that also, also means 2. I could two have said as well. Means, as well also means... Two as well as also as well as it's like yeah there's there's similes you know there's so many similes if you use the right similes you get the right results if you use certain you know other similes you use other other words that are that you know that maybe maybe there are better similes there's there's better ways to say things and do things so yeah there's some always to it so that's good. Death Proof is pretty, like, strange. Oh, it's, but, a, it's a Quentin Tarantino film, so, I mean, he literally, he, like, he, having seen how in his films he has someone get directly, like, their body cut in half and split vertically down half with the katana, obviously Death Proof is going to be strange. That was actually... That was actually in, uh, in Kill Bill uh, Volume 1 during the, the, the fight in the, yeah, the tea house. Yeah, he had fun uh, with, with... Black and white and everything, yes. Yeah. To say the least, he had fun with Death Proof. That's good. I, am, I imagine there's, there's probably a lot of goodness to it, so... <sighs> Would you want to watch it? Or... Could I put it on? You can do anything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it comes down. I don't to necessarily you care to put on if you don't necessarily wish to see it right now. I'll have to watch it later. It's already like four forty ish, four forty five. <laughs> yeah, so. Definitely. That's why I have curiosity. Because it is up there in time. Don't know how the brain is moving. Honestly, it's one of those where it's like, yeah, I can probably throw my head, head earbuds on and just absorb more because I feel like I just put out a lot right there and it's just like yeah interesting what would you choose to put on the headphones that's a good question Music, studying. Yeah. Audio files. Yeah. B book. You know. mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you like to listen to? Is that what you're, why, why you're asking? I mean, dependent. Dependent on? The answer. Mm. Yeah. 
Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> what makes it interesting? That's a good question. <laughs>